tonight. The Sarah Land Spartans into the Leopards' Den with a number three state ranking, a secured playoff berth, and an undefeated season. But Blunt is ready to shut all that down. They know a win would send shockwaves across the state and keep them alive for a 12th consecutive playoff appearance. Can the Spartans unite and stave off these pesky Leopards? Or will Blunt roar to victory and spoil the Spartans' perfect season? We'll find out next as Week 10 action unfolds for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corey LeBounty. Down on the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. Corey, we've had this one circled on the calendar all year, and now it's here. Blunt versus Sarah Land. Ten weeks of high school football has gone away from us, Al, and you can tell by the temperature in the air tonight. Yeah. Fall is definitely here. Playing conditions tonight on the field, we got drenched with rain yesterday. Right. So playing conditions will be a factor tonight on the field, but Al, 6A Region 1, can the Spartans go undefeated like you mentioned? That's right. Or can Blunt go ahead and climb themselves in a great situation to move up in the region standings? We'll find out with some exciting 6A Region 1 football coming up. Hey, let's get right to your checklist right now. Blunt is the home team. Corey, what's on your checklist for these Blunt Leopards tonight? When you look at the Blunt Leopards, they must match the Spartan swagger. And what do I mean by the Spartan swagger? They must match the intensity that the Saraland Spartans are going to bring tonight. They must put away the penalties. They don't want a lot of penalty flags. And like Santis Gamble said, that old yellow dirty rag, they want to make sure the officials keep it clean and in their pocket tonight. They need to finish strong, play four quarters of football, and just go ahead and have that intensity that allows them to play four quarters of football. Sarah Land on the flip side, Al. Okay. They must protect the quarterback. Brick Nizat is the trigger caller for Coach Jeff Kelly, and they have to make sure that they protect him and create a great pocket for him tonight. Limit the Leopards at the line of scrimmage. Stopping the run is going to be key because the Leopards do a great job giving the football to Jarris Williams. LaMarcus Brown is a dual-threat quarterback for the Blunt Leopards, and the Spartan special teams are always a factor. So we'll see what happens tonight on my checklist as the game progresses. All right, as the game goes on, we may come back to those. Let's head down to the field right quick and check in with Kimberly Dunn. That's right, guys. As you mentioned earlier, these conditions on the field are very swampy. So these guys have their work out ahead of them. But everyone is excited here tonight. They are ready to start this football game. And one of these teams will come out with a win. We'll see who it will be tonight. Thank you, Kimberly. It's exciting right here. Look good feel at Harris Terry Stadium. The Blunt Leopard faithful are out tonight ready to cheer on their Leopards to try to get this win. Corey just talked about it, Sierra Land coming into the ball game with a perfect season, and it is absolutely perfect for football tonight. 62 degrees down on the field, partly cloudy, 70% humidity, no chance of rain. I think we cleared all the rain out yesterday and early this morning, but it is windy. Winds out of the northwest at six miles per hour. So we are going to watch how this game unfolds. Conditions are a bit choppy down on the field as we walk down and talk with some of the coaches earlier before the ball game. And there's the kickoff from the Leopards. Sarah Land on the move with the kickoff return and coming up the middle, taking it all the way into Blunt Leopards territory for the Spartans with a great return right there. Daniel Taylor, one of the up guys, puts the ball, Corey, right about at the blunt. 43-yard line, great field position for Brent Nizak. Just what the doctor ordered for Coach Kelly, getting that spark from the kickoff. And if you look at this offense, it's led by offensive coordinator Jeff Kelly, who also, he calls the plays throughout the week, but Brett Boutwell is his assistant on the offensive side of the ball. But We'll see what he dials up right here with the great field position already in Leopard territory. First and 10 Well, the Spartans as they hand it off to their big back, Rayshon McAlpine. This kid has rushed over 1,300 yards on the year. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Spartans. You talk about Brent Nees at the junior. 54% completion percentage, 11 touchdowns on the season across the front line for Sarah Land, averaging 256 pounds. Make sure you keep your eyes out for number five, Jay Williams. 
This kid is Mr. Excitement, averaging 16 yards of reception for Sarah Land. And they get the ball out to Daniel Taylor on a little quick screen, but it is shut down by the Leopards. That's going to be a loss as we head toward third down. Great tackle by Zadrick Milligan, 6'3", 195 pound junior, coming up from his free safety position with an open field tackle. There's the defense for the Blunt Leopards, and it's big and hefty. 285 pounds across that front. They play a 3-4, led by Cortland Martin, the senior. He's got eight sacks on the season, and also leading the team in tackles, number five, to Cameron Johnson. It's a very, very stingy Blunt Leopard defense. That pass is overthrown. Nizat trying to get that ball out, and it is incomplete, so it'll take Sarah Land to fourth down. We'll get our first look at kicker Cole Robish for the Spartans. So three and out, great field position for Sarah Land, but they can't capitalize. Exactly, Al, but the pressure that was presented by Cortland Martin from his defensive end position, that's something that Blunt's going to have to do to be effective tonight. Get into the face and put pressure on the six foot five quarterback who's an outstanding pocket passer. Back to field for the Leopards. Looks like Jordan Harris back there. And he does field it. Nice return up to maybe the 30, maybe 31 yard line. We'll take our first look at the Blunt Leopards offense here as they come onto the field led by quarterback LaMarcus Brown. Possibly he would have uh, kind of on the shaky, shaky list for this week. But Coach Holly told us he's going to get the start tonight. He didn't play last week against Spanish Four. So we're going to see the young man tonight. He's a sophomore, Corey, a young guy. We saw him the first of the season against uh, Viger in the Battle of Pritchard. So LaMarcus Brown in uh, week 10, we'll get our second look at him. Has really matured since week number one. Has 35 rushes for over 500 yards and four touchdowns. And again, he's a dual threat quarterback. Can go ahead and tuck it and run. So it's going to be impressive to see what this Spartan defense does who don't get up that many points. They do not. One of the toughest in the state. We'll talk about that defense coming up shortly here. A little quick handoff as the Leopards running it up the middle, getting that ball to Jarris Williams. That may be close to a first down. We'll take a look at it. Here's the blunt offensive starters right here, averaging 284 across the front line. It is hefty and it is big. And there's a flag on the play right there. You're right about that, Corey. LaMarcus Brown, he's leading the quarterback there. Also keep your eyes out for Cameron Grays and Eric Williams. They're wide receivers doing work for the blunt offense. But right now, the work is going backwards. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Flag on the play. There's our referee, Billy Pine, our first flag early in the ball game here. And that's something you want to negate if you're the Blunt Leopards because you had a positive run on first down. We're able to turn it upfield against this stingy defense, and now right. all of a sudden it comes back and it costs you five yards. The rest of our officials handling the contest tonight. I talked to uh, Mr. Payne before the ball game. Said, Hopefully won't mention name too much. He said, yeah, we're going to try to stay out of the contest. But right now he's making his second appearance as Blunt is calling a timeout. So Blunt calls timeout. With the timeout, we'll take a look at the Sarah Land defense. This line averages 245 across the front. They play a 3-4 just like Blunt does. And, Corey, it is quite stingy. The defense has 28 total sacks, 28, 21 takeaways, and boy, they are an exciting bunch led by Cole Dewitt. Also, Adam Chaney, defensive end. He has nine sacks on the season, and this defense is something else. Matter of fact, Mr. Dewitt, one of the uh, Crichton Optimist Club players of the week, just week before last as well, so keep your eyes out for the Sierra Land defense throughout the evening. Corey, you talk about them averaging on the defense, only giving up 5.8 points a ball game. Defensive coordinator Scott Crowley does a wonderful job, has been with Jeff Kelly since he's been here at Sarah Land, and Coach Kelly's in his eighth year. The defense has had four shutouts against B.C. Rain, Robertsdale, LaFleur, and St. Paul's and only has allowed 46 points all season. Unbelievable. Sarah Land coming in undefeated tonight, number one in the region. Blunt calling an early timeout, so Coach Howley and the coaching staff want to get things together. First down and up the middle goes Williams, and he's bouncing off Sarah Land Spartans. 
as he gets into Spartan territory down to about the 33-32 yard line. Big run from Jarris Williams. And that's one way to negate a penalty that was gained on first down. You saw this hole open up and he knows exactly what to do with it. You're not gonna be able to get this young man down without taking his legs out. They just bounce off of him, do defenders. He's caught from behind by a Sarah Land defender and that's a good job of Charles Sullivan, the inside linebacker, catching him from behind. But Jarius Williams has close to 1,000 yards rushing this season. And he's running behind that big, blunt offensive line. As I said, they average 284 pounds across the front, and it is big with a lot of meat on that bone. First and 10 in Spartan territory. They're going to go back to Williams again. He gets behind the line. They're trying to push him forward, but the Spartans will have none of that as they push him back, takes Blunt to second down. One of the things that you have to realize is that Sarah Land is coming off of a bye. So That's right. coming off a bye, you have a chance to kind of work on things fundamentally, rest up your nicks and bumps and bruises. But sometimes a bye can come at the wrong time to where you're playing such great football, you have to gain the momentum back. Yeah, yeah. So we'll call about second and six here for the Leopards. Scoreboard has it at second and four. It's second and nine. Yeah, you're right, of course, second and nine. Brown slips a bit, but he does get the pass off, and it is juggled, but it is brought down for a touchdown by Eric Williams. That is a touchdown. Yes, it is. Blunt on the scoreboard at the 8.30 mark. You look at the replay, a clean pocket for LaMarcus Brown and just the old tip drill to Eric Williams. He's able to cock back and throw that football. The 10th touchdown by LaMarcus Brown, the fifth touchdown reception for Eric Williams, the 6'2", 185-pound senior who keeps his eye on the football. Oh, yeah. Great concentration, being able to come away with that football after the tip that was caused by the Sarah Lynn defender. Now here's a critical point after attempt. The kick is up and it is good. So Blunt on top early, Quentin Washington with the PAT, Corey. So that looks like about a 33 yard touchdown pass from Brown to Williams. And uh, Blunt has the first shot across the bow, kind of gives him that shock. And you just talked about the momentum coming off the bye week for Sarah Land. Not saying they came out flat, great field position, but it was a quick three and out for the Spartans. Yeah, you look at the situation, Alonzo Johnson, who's the offensive coordinator, for the Blunt Leopards. They come in averaging 24 points a game, yep. and because of it, he decided to call his shot and felt comfortable with Eric Williams going to getting that football. So that's just great execution by the offensive coordinator, by the quarterback and wide receiver tandem. And it takes those type of bounces throughout the game to win a huge region game. Oh yeah, and think about it, Corey. First play, great run up the middle. Brought back on a penalty by Williams. They go back to him again, another big play. And the next play, boom, we got a touchdown. So Blunt with a quick, almost maybe three, four play drive. And they're on the board, seven nothing already. Nice momentum. Now they just need to make sure they sustain it if you're the Leopards. On the move for the Spartans coming back. Jay Williams bringing that one up to about the 42 yard line. Ball escapes out. Got to thank our folks over there at Jersey Mike's for taking care of us all season and tonight. Jersey Mike's a sub above, getting us hooked up with a nice platter, taking care of the crew. Very yummy on a cold night tonight, Corey. And again, fall festivals are coming up, so you can contact Jersey Mike's. They can handle all your catering needs. Mark and Christina Sinclair have three locations here in Mobile and one in Malbis. So yeah. Jersey Mike's a sub above. Got to get it Mike's way when you go by there as well. So our second look right here at the Spartans. Early, early blow to the mouth there from the Leopard sticking it to him. Stoppage in play. There's a flag on the play. It looks like a pre-snap penalty. So false start against the Spartans. And this ball game not starting the way Jeff Kelly probably wants it to for his Sierra Land Spartans tonight. That's putting it in reverse, something that the Spartans want to stay away from also, especially now trailing 7-0 to zero here on the road. The 
Sun Leopards again trying to secure a better playoff position for themselves and ruin the undefeated season thus far of the Spartans. Hand off to Rayshon McAlpine. Big bag for the Spartans. He gets it back to the original line of scrimmage and a little extra, so second down for Sierra Lane. Big tackle by Lee Hunter, the defensive tackle, 6'5", 305 pounds sophomore, has offers as a sophomore from Louisville, Tennessee, Auburn, comes in with 40 tackles, just made his 41st tackle, but look how nimble and agile he is on that defensive line at 300 plus pounds. You can see why he gets those offers. Yeah, that 3-4 defense, Coach Hyler made a couple changes since we've seen them week one against Viger and another stoppage, another flag. Wow, play getting a little sloppy here. So this one's off sides against Blunt, so Sierra Land will get five down. free yards. That's unfortunate if you're the Blunt Leopards because you had a little momentum going defensively, but I'm gonna go back to Lee Hunter again. You look at him last week on the first possession of the football game, he lined up at the quarterback position and actually threw a pass wow. on the first play of the game. He plays the center on the basketball team, so he's also just a tremendous athlete. So the five yards that Sierra Land just received, they're gonna take it back and we'll go back five yards. And as Mr. Pine told me before the ball game, hopefully you won't call my name too much, but we've been calling referee Billy Pine a lot so far, Corey. Giveth and taketh away <laughs> in this situation. Wow. Back to where we started. Second down and 11 yards to go for the Spartans. Trips to the bottom of the screen. They hand it off to McAlpine. He tries to barrel up the middle. Takes the pile with him up to about the 46, 47 yard line as the blunt, mighty marching leopards continue to just savage us with their sound next door, Corey. They, they are still lit. <laughs> you you got to bring that type of enthusiasm because the players fit, feed off of the band. And when you have two defensive ends or defensive tackle like Cortland Martin and Lee Hunter, Cortland Martin just made that tackle. He's 6'2", 260. So it's going to be imperative that Sarah Lamb finds a way to break containment of this 3-4 defense. Third and short right here. Well, the Spartans, a little trickeration, a little, little throw-off jet sweep, but that is brought down. It goes nowhere. Jerome York takes that little pitch from Nizat, and he goes backwards. So it'll be punting time for Mr. Robish again as the Sarah Land Spartans can't and that seem to get things to going, getting the, getting the drive going, getting the momentum happening, Cor. And here's the biggest thing, the field conditions, because Sarah Land has not been able to plant their feet and hit the corner and get past the line of scrimmage. But what's going to be imperative for Blunt to do right here is to field this ball cleanly. You don't want to have any turnovers in the special teams area. Harris setting up right about his own 23-yard line. Robish gets a nice punt off there. Fair catch from Harris, so he feels it right about the 21. Let's take a look at the impact players. Who do you have tonight for the Blunt Leopard score? Impact players, Kobe McCovery, the senior offensive lineman, outstanding student athlete, just a young man who's just very friendly, great in the classroom, and Cortland Martin just mentioned his name on the defensive side of the football for the Blunt Leopard. 6'2", 260-pound senior, has looks from Jacksonville State and Florida Atlantic. For the impact players for the Spartans, you have Larson Hall, the senior linebacker, and also Jay Williams, the wide receiver for the Spartans. Jay Williams is a Southern Miss commit. We saw Williams bring that uh, kickoff back. Nice run back for Williams earlier, but Sierra Land could not capitalize off it, so another drive stalls for them. And we're looking at the Leopards right now. First and 10. And we're going to be looking at Mr. Billy Pine again. That's a false start against Blunt. So Blunt will go back five yards and try again. So it'll be first and 15 here for the Leopards, ball sitting at the 20-yard line. And that could be one of those drive killers before you even get started to where you put it in reverse at first and 15. You want to try to stay away from those because this Spartan defense is going to tighten up. High snap, but Williams gets the handoff from Brown, picks up maybe a yard or two. So it'll be second and long for the Leopards. That stop made by our impact player, Larson Hall, the 5'11", 220 pound senior outside linebacker, made sure the Leopards only picked up two yards on first down. 
second down and 15. In the backfield for Blunt, Ty Smith and Jarris Williams. Flanking Brown, and that play is busted as Brown turned around and tried to hand it off, but no one was there, but he keeps it. Gets maybe one or two yards, so a kind of broken play for Blunt, third down. Yeah, I don't know if you take a look at the replay. Our Kobe McCovery, number 70, look at him get under the Spartan defender right there and really push him backwards. Right. And you can see why he's just an impact player because he has such great strength and gets that great push. But when you have a busted play, it's up for the quarterback to try to make something out of nothing. He wasn't able to get that many yards that time. Ball sitting right there at the 21-yard line. We'll call this about third and 10 here for the Leopards. Little screen they're trying to set up. That could be dangerous and upended and brought down. Oh, my goodness. Look at that tackle by Doug Sullivan. You Charles Sullivan, the inside linebacker, 5'11", 195-pound senior. His quarterback kind of left him out to dry. It was really a slow developing play it was. and really could have been intercepted. But unfortunately, we're going to have another flag on the play. As we take a look at the replay, great drop back again by LaMarcus Brown, slow developing and Boom, Johnny on the spot was Sullivan, and he just smashes and upends the Leopard offensive player. And he leads the Spartans in tackles. Here's behind. Eligible downfield on the offense. That penalty is refused. Put down. After a tackle like that by Doug Sullivan, you want to refuse that, Corey. Wow. It was an outstanding tackle. And again, just textbook finding a way to diagnose the play. But normally when plays take too long to develop like that, that's right. exactly what happens. Jay Williams back to receive this punt. Takes it at about the 49-yard line, and those field conditions come in, Corey, as he takes a slip on the field, and I see a flag coming in, so we'll wait for that call. Right now, we have an opportunity to talk about future ones and the great job they've been doing helping us all season, future ones with the polos. Tonight, we got the black polos, Corey, but I need a little extra warmth with it as well. I had to put the jacket on, but future ones right there for us. Future ones wear the future athletic apparel and equipment needs they can meet. Gus First Smith. Foul. Face mask, 15 yard penalty, first down. And Trent Massey both do an outstanding job at Future Ones. So unfortunate, face mask against the Blunt Leopard, so that'll give Sarah Land a free 15. And they are close to the red zone already. Now we saw them on their first possession in the ball game get into Blunt Leopard's territory. Let's see if they can capitalize on this one right here. They're going to need to get the ball past the line of scrimmage, rushing the football. If they're able to get to the second level of that Leopard defense, they'll be in great shape. Little quick pass out to Jay Williams. It is intercepted and on the move for the Blunt Leopards, taking it up and could go to the house all the way with a pick six. That's a big touchdown for the Blunt Leopards. McKendrick Tucker takes it home all the way and that's a huge play because you look at the quarterback get rocked as soon as he threw the ball. And when he let go of it, the quarterback read it exactly right. And because he was able to read it right, he's able to take it to the house Looks for like a pick six. Andre Harris. And it is going to be Andre Harris. Andre Harris. Wow. Quentin Washington on for the PAT. I think if we can take a look at that throw again, it's one that I know Nizat would like to have back, but again, he wasn't able to really plant and get it to his throw, and because of it, here's the instant replay. A great timing on the football, and it's exactly what you diagnose. Take it to the house time Wow, Mr. Harris. Harris going house for the Blunt Leopards to give them a huge 14 to zero advantage over the Sarah Land Spartans. 67 yards to the house and Blunt is on top 14 nothing. Now Coach Kelly told me before the ball game, he said he knows this is gonna be a tough game. He said, don't let our record fool you, we're undefeated. But he knows that Blunt was coming in to play tough tonight and he's down 14 points. Well, let's go ahead and talk about the relationship between go ahead. Lev Holly and Jeff Kelly. Lev Holly had the opportunity to be Jeff Kelly's defensive coordinator while he was at Jackson High School a few years years ago and Coach Holly said it, they're best friends off the field, but for these minutes that are going down <laughs> tonight, they don't like each other. A little short kick right there from Blunt and Williams 
takes it about the 25 yard line. He did talk about that. Said, we got to play my best friend tonight, but right now we got to play football. And boy, Blunt is on fire right now, Corey. Well, it's just one of those things that keep coming off the bye week that the Spartans were on. You, you, you sometimes take a bye week at the wrong time, and the, and the Leopards are continuing to play football hard here on their home field and know what's at stake. And they're playing with more passion right now than the Spartans. But the Spartans will settle down. Trust me, once they're able to get the run game going, right. it's going to create some other opportunities for them. They haven't been able to rush the football yet, and that's what I'm looking for. And McAlpine has over 1,300 yards on the season, has 14 touchdowns. He's averaging 14 yards a carry. But not tonight against this Leopard defense. He can't average two or three yards a carry. Yeah, you can't give anything up uh, against these defensive players for Blunt. Defensive quarter, Lee Max Smith giving up 12.3 points per game. And again, the Leopards are just shutting everything down in between guard and tackle tonight. The Spartans haven't been able to bounce anything to the outside and have been behind the sticks every single second and third down possession. That's right. That's right. Second and about eight right here for the Spartans. Hand it off again to McAlpine. They're trying to get that run game going, Corey, as you mentioned it. I don't think Coach Kelly's going to give up on it. A lot of teams use the run to set up the pass, so McAlpine picks up maybe one or two, and it'll take Sarah Land to third down. Once again, behind the sticks. We've seen this all night, and McAlpine taken out of the game into the sideline right now. He's a little bit gimpy walking off, and he might have landed awkwardly on that tackle or awkwardly a little earlier, and you want him to be 100% healthy because we've seen him early in the season rush for 200 yards plus and be pulled in the fourth quarter. So he's a dynamic and explosive runner, like you mentioned, with over 1,300 yards so far. Knees at trying to get that ball out. Had Williams, but he was triple covered almost as a free safety came over the uh, came over the top there. So there's McAlpine on the sideline being stretched out, Corey. And you hope at this point in time that it's just cramps for the young man because, again, 1,300 yards rushing is very impressive by any back in a season. And we still have two games left to go to see what he can do the rest of this game and next week also for the Spartans. So Harris back to receive, setting up at his own 35-yard line. I'm sorry, 38-yard line, Jordan Harris. Robish on the punt for the third time tonight. Maryland just can't seem to get their offense together. Nice punt by Robish. And it pushes Harris back. He fills it at about the 24. Weaving his way, trying to get some yards, and he is brought down at the 24-yard line as Blunt will get their third possession of the ball game tonight after that pick six from Andre Harris. 67 yards to the house. Blunt on top, 14 to nothing right now. Sean Bird Jr., the 6'1", 205-pound junior, does a good job on the special teams play, making sure that no additional yards were gained. Now, let's see if the Spartan defense can really rise to the occasion and, like you said in your opening monologue, really unite right, right here because it's a critical stop. They can't allow Blunt to go in, score another three or seven on the scoreboard. Less than two minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Very explosive for the Blunt Leopards. Early touchdown pass from Brown to Williams and then pick six from Andre Harris right now. A common theme we've seen tonight. False start against the Leopards pushed them back five yards. So it'll be first and 15 once again. Alonzo Johnson, the offensive coordinator, he's been used to tonight dialing up those first and 15 or second and 13, second and long plays. Now first and 15. They've gone vertical in this situation earlier and really gave the ball to Jairus Williams also running right between guard and tackle. Handing it off to Williams. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Second down for the Leopards, second and long. We'll maybe call this maybe second and 17 as he lost a couple yards there. Good job by Jonathan Chaney, the 6'2", 225-pound junior from his defensive end position, getting the stop, making sure the Leopards don't pick up any positive yards. Now it's going to bring second and 19 for the Leopards. Sarah Land defense, all the secondary have at least one interception. We talked about their takeaways. 
They are plus 17 in the turnover margin. But right now, they are trying to get something to grasp a hold to because the Leopards are all over them. But they stopped that run right there by Williams, so it takes Blunt to third down. He maybe picked up a couple there, Corey, so we'll call it, what, third and about 17, maybe 16 here. Great tackle again by the Spartan defense, and it's a needed stop, and it's probably going to be the last play of the first quarter. But what an explosive one it's been for this Leopard offense and defense. Very explosive here for Blunt coming out, getting on top early on top of Sierra Land, 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. Receivers at the bottom of the screen, play clock under 10 seconds. Little quick screen and slipping up on the turf. Eric Williams can't get his footing together. And that'll take Blunt to fourth down. That'll probably take us to the end of the first quarter after this replay. You can just see that his cleats weren't long enough because when he went to plant and get it upfield, he wasn't able to. Michael Milner, the outside linebacker, 5'10", 190-pound senior, will get credit for that tackle on the play. And now it's going to bring up a situation to where Blunt will have to punt to the Spartans to start the second quarter. So they're going to let the... Game clock run out, and that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. Blunt on top, 14 to nothing. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Al Whedon, joined by Corley Bounty. Down on the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. And let's go down there and check in with Kimberly. What's going on? Yeah, so as we talked about at the beginning of the game, that this field, these field conditions were going to be a challenge. We have been able to see that come into effect several times throughout the game with a lot of slipping and sliding down here. But one more thing I wanted to mention was Corey mentioned earlier at the beginning of the game his checklist, and he said that what um, – what Blunt needed to do was to match Sarah Land's intensity. And I believe that so far in this game, they have not only matched that intensity, but they have surpassed it. They are pumped up tonight, and they have come ready to play some football. Thank you, Kimberly. They are definitely pumped up, and this band continues to be pumped up. Corey, we get to broadcast games from the press box a lot, but I have to say, this Blunt Leopards band has been on point all night so far and keeping the fans and the, and the players excited. Just brings you a little extra juice, as I mentioned earlier, on the sidelines. When you hear that as a student athlete out there on the field, you make that big play or that you, you know the band's going to roar yeah. along with the crowd anytime you make a big time hit or a big time play. So Coach Stallworth is doing an outstanding job keeping his leopard, leopard band <laughs> with the fans in the stands, like you said, out lit. And there is a shot of the blunt band. Looking good in the uniforms tonight there as well. Full house, nice crowd here tonight at Harris Terry Stadium. And that play goes nowhere. Cordell Flott bringing him over to the offense, and they can't get things going. So Coach Kelly digging into the bag of tricks here, Cord, trying to find something for the Spartans. Cordell Flott is normally playing the wide receiver position for the Spartans. He's also a dynamic runner, has four rushes for 130 yards. You want to get the ball into the hands of your playmakers, and that's what they tried to do with Flott in that situation. Up the middle, nice carry for the Spartans there. Picks up a couple. That's one thing they've been trying to do is get drive going as Rayshon McAlpine picks up maybe four or five. So we'll call this one third and about a long five yards. Maybe call it third and six here for Sierra Land. Can they get a first down? It's been a long time since they've gotten one, Corey. The way that they've gotten first downs thus far have been through penalties. With the penalty, you're right. So with that situation being said, I think they only may have had two first downs, maybe only one in the first quarter. He's that trying to connect with Jay Williams, and that cannot be done. But I believe there's a flag on the play. Let's look at why he was not able to complete that pass. You, If you're able to bring up the replay, Big Lee Hunter was able to get into the backfield and step up into it. Look at number 32, get in into the, the face. face of Brett Nizat. And that's a distraction, folks. 300 pounds coming at you, getting in your face in your passing lane. You're not able to throw a clean ball. And there it's going to bring up another punting situation for the Spartans. Well, no flag there. A timeout being taken right now. 
timeout by Blunt. So Coach Holly is going to take his second timeout of the ball game. Since we've got a timeout, we'll talk about what happens at halftime. The Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. That's where Kimberly Dunn goes into the stands and gets a spectator. She'll ask them a question. If they answer that question correctly, she'll take care of them with a Chick-fil-A prize bag. Got to thank Chick-fil-A for sponsoring this all season. So make sure you stick around for that during halftime with Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Also coming up November 5th, application process begins online. If you're trying to get your child enrolled into Magnet School, get that application filled out. Magnet School Applications, the process begins online November 5th. Need some information, call the number right there in front of you or visit mcpss.com. Deadline is December 5th. Here's one of the things, Al, is we're sitting high atop the press box here at Blunt. The right. field started off being a little green. Now it's turned to a darker shade of brown here early in the second quarter. And as it continues to go along, I think this game, the field will continue to turn a darker shade of brown. I agree with you on that, on that robush, Robish setting up the punt this ball from his own 30-yard line. And Jordan Harris... He's planted solidly at the 20. I believe this is Robish's fifth punt of the night, Corey. And he's been laying into him all night. So Jordan Harris fills it cleanly, works his way up to the 35, and he's brought down right about at the 39-yard line. So we'll get another look here at the Blunt Leopards offense. Their last series didn't go too well for him right there. Larson Hall, the outside linebacker, again, one of our impact players, making another special team stop. But for all of these athletes, especially the wide receivers, the quarterbacks, the running backs, the skill position players, being able to try to plant on this wet field as we got over uh, one and a half inches of rain yesterday here in the Mobile, Alabama area, and it's created all type of chaos on the field tonight. You haven't said it all season, but Corey, this might be the night that your good friend, the turf monster, may grab a couple victims during the ball game tonight. Williams up the middle. And he's met at the line of scrimmage by a few Spartans as they bring him down in on the tackle there, Doug Sullivan as well. So he leads the team in tackles right in on the action, second down for Blunt. Good job of the Spartans not letting the Leopards get beyond the line of scrimmage, something that you see a lot of early in the season and through the first eight weeks by this Spartan defense. Again, they only give up 5.8 points per game, and the Leopards already have 14 on the scoreboard. LaMarcus Brown taking the snap and also using that play clock to his advantage and game clock. Up the middle goes Jarris Williams, but he's met once again by the Sarah Land Spartan defense. We'll give him credit for maybe one or two yards, so it'll be third down and about seven here for Blunt. And what you want to see by this Spartan defensive squad is they're continuing to what we call can opener, the football, trying to rip and grab and claw at the football, so the Leopards are going to have to make sure they continue to secure the pigskin. Sarah Land looking to get some type of momentum going right here get a spark as they're down 14 points as we approach under nine minutes remaining in the first half. Receivers at the top of the screen as Brown takes the snap and the flag comes out. Tried to get that ball complete across the middle and could not, had his eyes on Melvin Williams incomplete, but there was a flag. False start against Blunt, so that'll push them back five yards. Yeah, it's a All situation right. to down, where down. you'll have an illegal formation called. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalties are fused. Fourth down. So they call legal formation on that, not a false start. Declined the penalty, fourth down, blunt punting, so they could not take advantage of this great field position they had. Yeah, and again, the Spartans now are going to have an opportunity to see when Blunt punts the football for the first time tonight. Um, it, it would be interesting to see how they're able to turn it up. Sometimes you need that spark, and it comes from a special teams play. But right now, the Spartans, because they've struggled offensively, really need a big return right here as the opening kickoff was a good return, even though they weren't able to do anything and went three and out. LaVirgil Smith bobbles it, but he gets a nice punt off over the head of Williams who has to hustle back center field to call a fair catch, and he slipped up. Your buddy, the turf monster, got him there, Corey. A little sloppy, sloppy field conditions right here at the 23-yard line. So Sarah Land 
takes over at the 843 mark. Sarah Land won last year's game 42 to 14, and this series is tied. They've only played each other four times. Blunt has won twice, and Sarah Land has won twice. So whoever wins tonight will lead the series three to two. You have to look at Sarah Land. They beat Blunt one year ago, 42 to 14. And on the horizon for the Spartans next week is Spanish Fort. Yeah. Brett Nizat, an excellent quarterback, trying to get this Spartan offense going. The quick handoff up the middle right there to the big back for Sarah Lynn. Kerry White is going to be the big back. The big fullback, 5'10", 215 pounds, senior, has over 422 yards rushing on the season. But one of the things I love about Brett Nizat, he's 55, 101 for 836 yards on the season. With his six foot five frame, when he's able to stand upright and they're able to protect him, he's going to put the ball on the money. A wonderful quarterback, a wonderful young man as well. Nick Alpine not in the ball game right now as Williams goes into motion, and they flank it out to him. Got some block. He's got some room. The blocker set him up. He's got the first down. This may be the spark that the Spartans need as he approached the midfield stripe court. And Jay Williams, the 5'11", 175-pound senior, makes the reception on the play for the Spartans. Great swing pass out to the sure-handed Jay Williams, who, again, is a Southern Miss commit. That's the type of completion and the type of momentum that uh, Nizat really needs for his confidence. And I, I mentioned he's a strong presence in the pocket. And the Blunt Leopards have done a good job trying to neutralize and putting pressure on him. Right. Early. And they bring McAlpine back in. He picks up a couple and another flag is down. And we'll get the call here from Billy Payne. Here's a take a look at the replay right there. McAlpine going up the middle. Branches out and gets a couple yards, so this call is against Sarah Land. And Sidney Collins does a good job of lowering his shoulder to make sure he doesn't get called for targeting. And you again, it's textbook tackling when you have heads up football and are taught the correct way, which the defensive coordinator Lee Mark, Max Smith does a wonderful job of teaching the guys at Blunt how to tackle correctly. Excellent tackle right there. So a big 15-yarder against Sierra Lynn. Anticipation on the offense, 15-yard penalty, replay first down. 12 men on the field, Corey, and that negates everything that Sierra Lynn just did and pushes them back to the 31-yard line. So you look at a situation now, it's going to bring up probably 24 yards to go. Uh, and, and that's critical for the Spartans because down in distance, you had something positive going, but you have the dynamic wide receivers and the speed along the edges that you can go to, whether it's Jay Williams or Daniel Taylor, your options there for Nizat if he has a clean pocket to hit those guys. Double stack receivers, Nizat looking to find someone. He finds Rayshon McAlpine, can't get his footing together, and he loses momentum and loses the momentum to go forward as he's brought down by the Leopards. So that play kind of stalls right there. Bad footing. He could have gotten out and gotten some more yards, but, but look, who, look who makes the tackle on the play. It's your big defensive tackle there again, he is, Mr. Lee. Lee Hunter. Mr. And Lee. a lot of people say he reminds you of DeMarco McNeil. I think that's an excellent comparison right. as far as size and, and agility-wise. DeMarco McNeil, the wonderful defensive tackle that played here in the late 90s for the Blunt Leopards, who went on to Auburn uh, and is now in the coaching profession. But... I think DeMarco McNeil was a little bit smaller than this, this big fella, Lee Hunter. Big run by McAlpine up the middle, but a late flag. And the Blunt Leopards are clapping as they're saying it's against Sarah Land. So we'll see what Billy Pine says. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. 15-yard penalty. It'll be third down. So on this series alone, that is 30 yards and penalties against Sarah Land. Wow. So as they march this one off, that's pushing the Spartans farther back at the 625 mark here as they're trying to get something going. As I talked about in the open, they need to unite quickly here, Corey. Second down and 34 yards to go, and I think there's going to be a timeout called by the Spartans so Coach Kelly can get his team's composure right. together. 
And speaking of Coach Kelly, let's put up the coaches' comparison between these two. You talked about it, Corey. Best friends, pretty much. Coach Lev Holly was the defense coordinator. Sarah Lynn coaching his eighth year. He's 68-25 and 25 overall. Has a 731 winning percentage. Former head coach of Jackson and Satsuma. As you can see, he took Jackson to the championship game in 09. And Sarah Lynn in 2014. And some of you locally may remember, played quarterback in Southern Miss, drafted in the seventh round. Corey, listen to this. In 15 years of coaching, he's only had three losing seasons. So Coach Kelly's familiar with winning. And across the field, his buddy Lev Holly in his fourth year of Blunt doing a great job here. Former coach of Escambia County. I like that number right there. After three years of all the Blunt coaches, he has the best winning percentage at 722. And if he wasn't a coach, he would be an attorney. Right now, his winning percentage is 705. Doing pretty good so far as the Blunt Leopards still trying to keep themselves in the playoffs. They definitely need this win tonight. Don't want to succumb to Sarah Land being undefeated. But right now, Blunt's on top as if they were the undefeated team. 14 to nothing. Second and a mile or a country mile, if you want to call it. A little quick out to Jay Williams. He's trying to make up for it as he takes a few Leopards past the 40-yard line. Nice play right there, Corey. They got a chunk of it back right there. And that's exactly what you want to do when you're facing third and 38. You want to take a nice little screen play and get it into your athlete's hands. The speedster is able to pick up a lot of those yards back. And now you're bringing up fourth down and 14 to where when you punt this ball away, you're not looking at a 20-yard difference. Right. You're putting the Leopards probably at a differential, especially if the ball goes end over end. With this wet turf, I don't expect it to really roll over. It'll probably die like a dead duck um, in this situation because the field is just so wet. It is, it is. So good timeout right there by our Coach Kelly. Calms his team down, get a chunk of the yards back as Robish punts it. But this one, not one of his best punts as it goes straight up in the air. And I believe the wind got a hold of it. And we have some extracurriculars going on on the field in a few different spots. Flags are coming out here as the officials try to break up some extracurricular activity after the play. So let's see how they sort this one out. It may be offsetting, but in that situation, you just have to keep your cool if you're the Blunt Leopards because you don't want to give the Saraland Spartans any hidden yardage in this situation. Billy Pine and his crew are going to do a wonderful job, and Mr. Billy Pine's about to give us the call. Block in the back on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the ball. First down. So they're calling the block in the back penalty. Let's tell you about right now the volleyball championship. 5A Area 2 champions. Congratulations going out to Citronelle as they captured the Area 2 title. Also, Baker, the 7A Area 1 champions here down on the Gulf Coast. And congratulations to them as well. And then the Super Regional Baker beat Fairhope 3 to 0. So Baker will play Auburn tomorrow at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, uh, Citronelle went down to Brew Baker Tech and McGill Tulin over Mary Montgomery three matches to zero as well. So congratulations to the Baker Hornets and also the Citronelle Wildcats for their area championships. A little quick out to Eric Williams, and he picks up maybe six or seven on that pass from Brown, and the wind is picking up top of press box here. Core our papers seeming to do their own little dance right now. And I tell you what, that was a nice hard throw by LaMarcus Brown, but look at the type of cushion that he was giving. The defensive back was probably 10 yards off of the line of scrimmage. So that's a great read and a great quick throw and catch by the Blunt Leopards. Going back to that punt that Robish had, so far he's been, the wind has been to his back. So that was his first punt going into the wind, Corey. And you can see how that north wind just pretty much stopped it as the Leopards have field position right here at the 40. And up the middle runs Jarris Williams into Sarah Land territory as they cross the midfield stripe up to about the 40, 46 yard line. And the offensive line is doing a great job getting that push. Kobe McCovery, Johnny Bonner, LaClarence Trenier, Ryan Locke, Connor Howard, just getting a great push on this Spartan defensive line that we haven't seen all season picking up a first down. 4.38 remaining here in the first half. Don't forget at halftime, we got the Chick fil A halftime trivia challenge coming up. Kimberly Dunn's going to try to get us another winner tonight here at Harry Terrace, Harris, Harris Terry Stadium on the campus of Blunt High School. Up the middle goes Williams. 
Nice run by him. It'll take the Lepers to third down, third and short here coming up for Blunt. Anytime you're able to get the secondary rover safety to make the tackle, Jaden Roberson, the five foot eight, 160 pound senior with the lick on the play for the Spartans. That's a big stop, but not until a big run. It's gonna bring up second down and four yards to go for the Leopards from the 41 yard line of the Spartans. So Blunt standing in front of the chains right now as you can hear the wind blowing through our microphone here, Corey. Very windy tonight here on the field. Williams taking it outside to the numbers. Can't make the turn and he is brought down so he's going to be short of the first down. And Blunt sitting right here in no man's land. See if they're going to punt this or if they're going to possibly go for it. Outside zone read, Trenton Williams, the free safety, 5'10", 170-pound senior on the stop for the Sarah Land defense. Now you're looking at third down and a long two yards to go. I'm with you with there. With 3'15 here, if the Leopards are able to pound and ground this one and get this first down, it'll just be like a needle poking a balloon here in the second quarter. Play clock under 10 seconds. Brown hands it off to Williams. He's got the momentum, and he busts through the line, Corey, and that's a first down as he takes it up to about the 32-yard line. Let's take a look at that replay. It's what I call the jumbo package. Comes in for the Leopards. Cortland Martin becomes a defensive back and blocks and opens up the hole for his running back, Jarris Williams, and that's, again, <laughs> deflating for the Spartans. Anytime you can bring in a jumbo package that consists of 260 and 240 pounds, a lot of meat. watch out. A lot of meat, Corey, and they're going to stick with it right now as the game clock is under three minutes. Coach Lev Holly making the clock his ally. Hand off once again to Williams in front of all that big meat. He's running to the 30-yard line. They'll give him four momentum to about the 30, so it'll take – Blunt to second down here. And again, Cortland Martland, what an athlete he is. He comes from his defensive tackle position at 6'2", 260. Again, being offered by Jacksonville State and Florida Atlantic proves that he can be a blocking back as well, trying to get Chancellor Handy, the nose guard for the Spartans on the ground. It's doing a great job in this jumbo package. Killing clock is Alonzo Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Leopards. Hand off once again to Williams. He is the workhorse tonight for the Blunt Leopards. Up the middle he goes. Close to another first down, maybe about two yards short as it takes the Leopards to third down and short here as they're approaching the red zone and the game clock approaching one minute remaining in the first half. Yeah, the Leopards are just methodically marching down the field. Again, with this full house backfield, plenty of meat on the bone of these blockers that are in front of the running back, Williams. Flags come out as the Leopards give that one to Darnell Williams. So they're not pushing back 10 yards on the hole right there. Travis Williams on the carry for the Leopards. And again, you don't want to see a flag come out as you're trying to bleed the clock and to half, but that one's going to go against Blunt. It's going to back them up a little bit. And leading 14 to 0, offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson is just going to be happy to run the football and run the football. Penalty down. on the offense, 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. Referee Billy Pine and his crew working hard here in the first half, Corey, earning that check tonight. Man, they have gotten their work in. I would say there's probably been on Blunt, probably eight penalties called, and against the Spartans, probably another five. So we've had close to 15 total penalties in the first half alone. Third and long here for Blunt. They hand that one off to Williams. He kind of scoots forward past the line of scrimmage, try to eat some of those yards back as we are under one minute remaining here in the half. Play clock hasn't started yet, so Blunt will have to get this one off. They will have to take a snap. Coach Lev Holly has used two timeouts in the first half, and he's right next to the official right now. And that's, I think that's what his strategy is right now, Corey, to call the timeout probably as the play clock gets down to about one or two seconds. Yeah, you want to bleed as much time off the clock as you can, call a timeout before one second left, and go ahead and punt this ball away and try to get the Spartans to have to drive the length of the field to attempt to score any points before the half ends. Good strategy put together by the Blunt 
coaching staff tonight. Sarah Land comes in averaging 39.3 points on offense. And right now they have a zero goose egg up on the scoreboard. I know we're not going to have a zero. We're going to have a winner at halftime. Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Don't forget Kimberly Dunn will try to get us a winner. She'll go into the stands, get a spectator, ask them a question or two. Hopefully we'll have one question, and they'll get it correct on that multiple choice. So the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge coming up shortly. And also thanks to Jersey Mike Subs taking care of the crew as they do every week. Corey, I'm telling you, when you go by there, have you gotten it Mike's way, Corey? Exactly. Get you it Mike's get way. Get it Mike's way. And that's what you ask for when you go into get it Mike's way. Jersey Mike's a sub above since 1956. Thank you very much to Mark and thanks. Christina Sinclair for all the sandwiches that they provide to the entire crew. And also thanks to Future Ones for take care of, taking care of us all season with the polos here tonight. We're rocking the black polos, looking pretty good and stealthy. You're looking good there, Miss LeBound, in your Appreciate black it. polo. Likewise, <laughs> Alan. Again, Future Ones wear the future, the innovators of the interchangeable practice jersey. Ah, I like that, I like that. So fourth down here for the Blunt Leopards. They're going to go for it. 14.5 seconds remaining here in the first half. No need to overcomplicate it. Coach Lev Holly calls that timeout. But they put together a pass play. They're going to chunk it downfield, see if they can maybe get the call. That ball intended for Eric Williams incomplete. Nothing lost right there. 7.9 seconds. You don't leave much time on the clock for Jeff Kelly here. Yeah, it's a situation now when you flip it over. Brett Nizad has outstanding arm strength, and if they're able to create any type of pocket for him, you have a dynamic wide receiver. You hear the Alonzo Johnson offensive coordinator go for the kill shot. At least the ball was thrown into the end zone to where Eric Williams was the only op had the only opportunity for the Leopards to catch the football. And 7.9 seconds left. Coach Kelly may decide to take a knee right here instead of taking that big shot with 7.9 seconds here in the second quarter. Right, don't risk it. Don't do anything dumb. Don't do anything stupid here. Just take your medicine. Go to the locker room. Let's discuss it. Get yourself back together. We all know, Corey, it takes four quarters to win a ball game and not two. So Sarah Land down 14 points. You can't just say it's over right now. Yeah, if you're the Blunt Leopards, you have to be extremely happy where you are here at halftime. Again, leading 14 to 0. And if you were to ask folks around the state of Alabama, would that be your score right now? Right. Probably not because, again, the Blunt Leopards have done a wonderful job of jumping on the Spartans early and putting them behind the eight ball. Let's take it down to the field. Kimberly Dunn has Blunt head coach Lev Holly. Coach, how do you feel about your team's performance so far in tonight's game? I'm very, I'm, I thought we played with a bunch of intensity right there. You know, that was one thing we talked about coming out was, you know, the executing side and, and the discipline side. We got away from, you know, what we do a couple of times with those penalties. But for the most part, I'm pleased with it. But, man, we got 24 more minutes, and that's a great football team over there. So we got to go in and correct some mistakes we made and just get ready to go for the second half. Yeah. So what specifically does your team need to improve on coming into the second half? We won. We got to, you know, do a better job of, of establishing the run and, and be positive on first down. Right now we've been behind the sticks, I think, maybe – four of the, the six drives we've had the ball, and we can't do that. So we'll go in and correct those things and get ready to come out in the second half. All right, thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Coach Alley talking about his first half performance from his Leopards there. Yeah, you go down my checklist, Allen. It's almost been to a T tonight because Blunt needed to match the Spartans' swagger and intensity. They came out and hit the Spartans in the mouth running oh, yeah. the football. They, did. they had to put away the penalties. That's something Coach Holly mentioned that they haven't done. And also finishing strong. He mentioned 24 minutes of football left. Let's see if they're able to finish off the Spartans. All right, we'll meet you on the other side for halftime. Blunt is on top 14 to nothing. You're watching the MC. PSS High School Football Game of the Week. Welcome back to Look Good Field at Harris Terry Stadium on the campus of Blunt High School. Blunt on top 14 to nothing for our MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corey Lebowney. And Corey, most of our scoring pretty much done in the first quarter. And it started off pretty quick with the Blunt Leopards coming out the gate there. Yeah, you look at LaMarcus Brown, who did not play last week. He had his self in an injury situation and has really bounced back nicely. Had a nice throw to Eric Williams. 
And it was the tip drill. He was able to come away with that huge completion of right. over 60 yards. I think it might have been 67 yards on that touchdown. So that was a big play for the Blunt Leopards. And then the defensive side of the ball. You look at the pick six. They put the additional points on the board for the Blunt Leopards. Now they're leading 14-0. to zero. They've done a good job so far of executing the game plan that yeah. Lev Holly has put in place. Coach Kelly, trust me, folks, he's going to go in at halftime, make the adjustments that he needs to, cannot control the field conditions, but the offense of line needs to get the push beyond the line of scrimmage to give their 1,300 yard rusher, Mac Alpine, an opportunity to run the football because right. the run will set up the pass for Nizak. Jay Williams, he can catch the football, folks. He's a Southern Miss commit for a reason. Right, Cordell right. Flott can get involved with the football also. So in the second half, look for the Spartans to go into halftime, make the changes and adjustments. We have 24 minutes left of outstanding football left to be played. We sure do. A big shout out to Andre Harris on that six yard pick six you talked about the young man pretty much just snatched it out of the air and just ran it back to the end zone so uh keep putting blunt on top 14 to nothing over sarah land all right we're going to come back and show some bands but right now remember you too can get involved with the united way right now we're going to get kimberly dunn involved it is time once again for the chick-fil-a halftime trivia challenge All right, we're here for our Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. And here with me tonight, I have Cameron Gildersleeve. That's right? That's right. All right, that was a little bit tricky. But you are in 11th grade at Blunt. So can you tell me about a little bit um, of the few things that you're involved with here at Blunt? Here at Blunt, I'm involved in sports medicine, which is my healthcare academy. I'm also a, a junior here at Blunt High School, so I'm involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. One of our mentor activities is Gentlemen's Academy, and we also have the Elite Service Organization. So you're kind of just involved everywhere. Yes. And he's down here on the sidelines with me. He's been cheering on this team and pepping everybody up, and everyone's been cheering for him almost as much as they've been cheering for this football team. So are you ready for the question tonight? Yes. All right, so tonight's question is who was the first female governor of Alabama and it's multiple choice so I'll give you a few um, answers to choose from first we have Helen Keller Kay Ivey Laureen Wallace and Condoleezza Rice so what you thinking um, it's not Condoleezza Rice I know that for sure okay. it's not Helen Keller because she was blind so we're gonna go with Lauren Wallace all right, that's right. Great job. You are the winner of our Chick-fil-A prize pack tonight. So you have like a gift card for Chick-fil-A, some sunglasses, um, a cut from Mobile County Public School Systems, and this awesome little goodie bag. So congratulations. Thank you. All right, you have a great night. That was the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Got a big winner right there, Mr. Gibblesley. Great job, great job on that. Right now we're going to try to take it down to the field and check out the Sarah Land Spartan Marching Band has blown up 14-0 at halftime. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. We'll be back with more halftime action. Don't move. Hello, I'm Helena Tyler. I would like to invite you to join me for Inside Education. Come with us as we take a look at what's happening around Mobile County Public Schools as well as what's happening in your child's classroom. That's Inside Education right here on the MCPSS TV Network. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. We are back live at Blunt High School. And now you can enjoy the sounds of the Blunt High School Marching Leopard Band. Let's take a listen. Be sure to pay attention to the decision, the running swing, the move, the groove, the high stepping. This is what marching band looks like. Thank you. 
sounds of the blunt, mighty marching leopard band, backed up also by the Chesting Middle School, Callaway Smith Middle School, and Scarborough Middle School as they're showing love to the feeder schools tonight. We'll be back with some first half stats for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Come and experience the fear for another year. <laughs> Alan Bryant's baseball hunted trail is back to terror. October 19th and 20th, 26th and 27th, and 29th through 31st. Open from dusk until the last scream is heard. Cost $8 per person. So prepare yourself for an extreme scream. Located behind the baseball field house. It's not for the weekend. Hi, I'm Todd. And I'm Terry, and we'd like to invite you to join us as we take a look at nature in ways that you've never seen before. Come travel with us as we go coast to coast to uncover some of the most interesting animals. And some of the most beautiful scenery that's offered outdoors. You can join us on our nature adventures right here on the MCPSS TV network. Coach, what, Coach, what was the atmosphere like in the locker room, and what did you say to your team to motivate them for the second half? We had a little adversity. You know, we've, we've been rocking and rolling all year. They hadn't had a whole lot of that. So, you know, what are we going to do? How are you going to respond? You know, they've made a couple plays here, and, and we got we got to settle down and do some better things, execute better on offense, and one play at a time. All right. Well, thank you so much, Coach. All right, Kimberly Corey, you talked about it last week as the great Ric Flair said, in order to beat a man, you got to beat the man. And right now, Blunt is on top beating Sarah Lynn 14 to nothing. Yeah, you look at the Spartans being 8-0. And, and I mentioned earlier about that bye week. Again, sometimes it comes at an inopportune time, but a lot of this has to do with the way the Leopards are playing right. and not the way the Spartans are playing. This, you know, Sarah Lynn needed to protect the quarterback. Well, right now, he hasn't had a clean pocket. And if you look at the rushing yards, Blunt has 97 rushing yards to only 28 for the Spartan offense. Passing yards, 46 to 37. Total yards, 143 to 65. The turnover really wasn't a factor until it got taken to the house for a pick right. six. Pick so if six. he goes to the ground, it's not that effective, but the penalty yardage has been critical for the Leopards. Coach Holly mentioned it at the beginning uh, of the halftime speech that he really feels that the penalties have to be limited in order for them to be effective in the second half and I totally agree with them 100 percent. Right. Coach Kelly knows what's in front of them. 24 minutes is plenty of football left in front of this Spartan team. They've had Spartan special teams not in the way that Coach Kelly would like it because they've been punting the ball. Robish has been, hey, Robish has been very field, busy Six or seven tonight. times punting for Sarah Way Lynn. too many times for the Spartans. Also, you have to limit the Leopards at the line of scrimmage. Right. Mr. Williams has had an outstanding and dynamic, explosive play running the football, and that's made a difference also. And Al, when you look at this overall game, 24 minutes of football is plenty of football left to be played, plenty oh, yeah. of adjustments oh, yeah. to be made. Again, if the Spartans get past the line of scrimmage, it's going to be amazing and spectacular to watch. Blunt on my checklist had to match the Spartan swagger and the intensity. They've done a great job of doing that thus far. Put away those penalty tie, you know, yardage. That's right. And the flags have got to go away if you're blunt. Finishing strong. Can they maintain and sustain through the last 24 minutes of this contest for Blunt? That's what it's going to boil down to, Al. This is what it's coming down to. You're right. They got to finish strong. I, I mentioned about it earlier. You know, in order to beat a man, you got to beat the man. And right now, you're only on top 14 to nothing. But it takes four quarters to actually beat the man tonight. And I feel that Sarah Land, in the situation, if they're able to protect Brett Nizat and give him just a little bit more time, whether it's a bubble screen, a delayed tunnel screen, they'll be in a good situation. Just completing one or two passes are going to give Nizat the confidence that he needs. And that's something it's going to be important for the Spartans to have because right now McAlpine is struggling rushing the football. We mentioned it only 67 rushing yards for the Spartans at halftime, right. which is unlike what they're used to because McAlpine comes in averaging 141 yards rushing per game. Right, right. He's a 1,300-yard runner so far this season, and he can't get things going, and that run has not been able to set up the pass. And as we saw, the one turnover was a pick six taken to the house for Blunt, and that pretty 
pretty much extended their lead up to 14 to nothing over Sierra Land. So I'm pretty sure, as Coach Kelly said, hey, you know, we've got to get ourselves together. But uh, we also know what's in front of us, what we have to do right now. It's 24 minutes left, as Coach Hiley said. And, and then and Sierra Land is not going to lay down, Coach. No, they're not going to lay down. And one of the critical things is going to be this first five minutes here of this third quarter. Sierra Land's going to have to come out, get a stop, some type of stop, and then get some offensive momentum. I, I, it looks like they want to try some kind yep. of squib kick or high pooch kick, which will make Blunt field the ball cleanly. And look at there, two guys over there, Jordan Harris and one of the other up guys. Up back guys couldn't decide who was going to bring it down. But the Leopards do grab hold, so they're going to take position somewhere around the 27, 28 yard line. So we'll get our first look at Blunt here in the second half as they are on top 14 to nothing. Al Whedon, Corey LeBounty, Kimberly Dunn down on the sideline. Quite a surprise, a lot of people shocked at this score tonight. And I want to make a special shout out to the Blunt Leopards. They're dedicating this season to Christopher McCanns. He was 19 years old, killed in an automobile accident before the season even started. He was a 2017 graduate, played on this football team. Each and every player in this community had an outpouring of support for this young man and his tragic accident and the death, the untimely death of this 19 year old young man. But the Blunt Leopards are playing for Christopher McCants this entire season. That's right. So Blunt continuing with that jumbo package you talk about in the first half there, Corey, as they hand that ball off to Williams. He picks up a couple, so it'll be second down for the Leopards. And that's something that the Spartans have made the adjustment of at halftime. And again, this is a great defense, only giving up 5.3 points per game. And because of it, only 46 points allowed all season. Quite a surprise. You talked about it early in the first half. Sarah Land has four shutouts credited to them this season, and right now they're being shut out by the Blunt Leopards. And Williams, Williams not being shut out. He wants to keep those legs going and keep running. One of the Sarah Land players upset as he tries to go back into the pile. Jarris Williams, like you just mentioned, you think the referee's going to blow his whistle. You play into, you hear a whistle. Continue to keep those feet churning, trying to gain those additional yards. Again, coming into tonight's contest, had over 921 yards rushing. He's probably going to eclipse the 1,000-yard mark tonight. Number 16 right there, Sean Bird. He upset at that last play. A couple of the Spartans trying to pull him, get, say, get your composure together, young man. Keep your head in the ball game. Third and about seven yards here for the Leopards as that jumbo package is still in. Pass is complete, but I believe the receiver's knee was down on that catch there for the Leopards. Jabriant Bradley, and that's enough for the first down, so ball going to be placed at the 41-yard line of Blunt. And the Spartans did not want the sticks to move on this initial drive. They wanted to try to hold Blunt to three and out, weren't able to do so, but the officials are making some type of call. Billy Pine and his crew are discussing something together right now, and it's going to be interesting before they spot the football what exactly it is we have. Scores crawling in at the bottom of your screen from other schools in action tonight. So penalty against the Leopards. That's going to push them back after that first down. And I know that's something that they're, you can hear all the Leopards fans oh, they are, and aren't happy they about it They are not at all. happy at all. We'll get the call here from Billy Pine. So it's going to take Blunt to third down. Third down and 13. Third and about 13 is what the PA announcers calling it here. And the Blunt faithful upset at that penalty as it pushes them back. The Spartans need to stop right here on third down and long. We call that money down. Brown decides to keep it there. Little extracurricular activity going on after the play. No flags come in, but the officials are Johnny on the spot trying to break it up before it starts. A lot of join going back and forth across the line of scrimmage there, Corey. And you would expect that between two great teams. You just, you don't mind them selling Wolf tickets. You just don't want them to have any extracurricular punches or activities that are involved that will result in ejections. But on third down, which is what we call money down, the Spartans 
had to get off the field in that situation defensively, and now they have an opportunity to have some of their best field position on a good return here offensively. Jay Williams lining up at the 35-yard line to retrieve this punt. Nice punt by Smith there for the Leopards. Flag comes in. This one may be going against Sarah Lane. We know when the flag comes in like that, possibly a block in the back or maybe a hold against the receiving team. Yeah, I think it was a block in the back in that situation. I, I really didn't see any holding. Uh, anytime you can't see the numbers clearly, you know that it's probably going to be a block in the back, and that's the situation for the Spartans. We're able to finally field one cleanly, and then now you're going to negate any type of return by blocking the back. Blocking the back on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. So Sarah Lynn will start the ball at their 21-yard line, but before we do that, Lev Holly calls an early timeout here at 9.02 in the third quarter. So put a peg right there. Blunt has two timeouts remaining, only up 14 points. So right now, let's take a look at the Alabama Sports Writers Association 7A poll as it comes up. There's a 7A poll right there. McGill Tulin at number eight. Theodore drops down to number 10. Remember last week, they were eight and nine and Theodore had that loss to Davidson, so they basically dropped down to two spots. Fairhope picking up 13 votes there, Corey, as they're trying to enter top 10 poll. As Theodore's number 10, they clinched the region championship last night with a win over MGM, so the number 10 team in the state is region champions. They also defeated McGill Tulin, ending their 30-game winning streak early in the season. And Central Phoenix City and Auburn are playing each other tonight, yep. one versus three. They're tied up at seven apiece also. So one of those teams will suffer their first loss of the season. We'll take it back down to the field right now. First and 10 for the Sierra Land Spartans ball at their own 21-yard line. Leopards jumping everywhere, jumping up and down everywhere, saying movement on the Sierra Land line. And as you can see, referee Billy Payne does make the mark there. Yeah, that's an interesting situation. Cortland Martlin helping make that call on that play. <laughs> Spanish Ford and Sierra Land right there, ranked number two and number three. And we have the number three team in the state down 14 punch, points right in front of us right here in the 6A top 10 poll. And they are trying to get themselves together, blunt all of them right now. 14 to nothing, so that would send some shockwaves across the state if Blunt can hold on to get this victory tonight. Rayshon all McAlpine trying to get some yards as he is brought down pretty much right at the line of scrimmage. Take a peek at the 5A pole while we can. Viger undefeated, remaining on top. Heard they were down to Opelika earlier tonight as well. Jackson getting one vote, trying to enter the top 10 pole, and they're trying to keep their self together as well. They're playing the floor tonight, Corey, up at Legion Field as well. So they want to get a victory as well in that contest as region play is going to be wrapping up for a few of these regions tonight. McAlpine on another carry as he carries a couple of the Leopards. Picking up a couple yards. Quick look at the 4E pole. UMS right still on top defending champ. They've stayed up there the entire season. Andalusia getting two votes. And we know 4A region play is really heady with a lot of things going on. And 4E Williamson got a big win last night over Scambia County Court. I believe you were there at last stadium for that ball game. Yeah, doing the PA announcing last night. Seven to two winners big over win for Scambia the win. County. And Jordan Harris Mitchell makes the stop on McAlpine. McAlpine's longest run of the game is only some six yards. So look at the 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A polls from the state brought to you by the Alabama Sports Writers Association. Another flag, another false start. A lot of penalties tonight against both of these teams, but a lot of false start penalties tonight, Corey. You look at Daniel Taylor lining up at the Wildcat position. So right. that's a look that the Leopards had not seen all night long, and we'll see if they go back to that Wildcat because when you show a play like that, sometimes you've shown your hand and now the defense adjusts accordingly, so it's almost like a wasted ace of spades on the table. Oh, yeah, like a wasted play there. So Nizak comes back in third down here for the Spartans as they're trying to get a first down this series seeming to go only backwards for them. Trips at the top of the screen. 
Nizak trying to unload, and he does have a man, Daniel Teller. And Taylor crosses the midfield stripe. I don't see any flags on the field, so that's a big play for the Spartans. The most explosive play of the night for Brett Nizad, hooking up with this man, Daniel Taylor, who was just lined up in the wildcat position. You look at the replay, Nizad had a clean pocket and shows that strong pocket presence and strong arm, putting the ball on the money to Mr. Taylor. Taylor averages 8.8 .8 yards of reception, one touchdown on the season. A big high percentage play for the Sierra Land Spartans, and they're going to give that ball off to one of their backs right there. Jalen Fumble, Pugh, fumble and on the play. Fumble on the play. Of course, the Leopards signaling that they have it. And the officials saying it is still Sierra Land's ball, so someone fell back on it for the Spartans. See if we that can take a look here. Someone would be 6'3", 285-pound sophomore Colton Beasley being able to get down that big frame, jump on the ball, and save the pigskin <laughs> for the Spartans. So Kerry White in the backfield right now, and they're switching to that Wildcat. Daniel Taylor takes the direct snap, hands it off to McAlpine on the jet sweep, and he is sweeping up the sidelines. But I believe he stepped out, Corey. He's going to pick up the first, though. I, I, it looks like they're going to put him beyond the sticks, picking up a first down. And a lot of extracurricular activity going on with Maddox Copeland and one of the Leopards over there on the far sideline near Sarahlands, right in front of the coaching staff. But no flags came in. Coach Kelly told me Maddox Copeland, kind of a throwback player from the old school, big fullback for him. So no flags come out. It's a first down on that jet sweep from McAlpine. And this is the deepest the Spartans have been in Leopard territory all game long since the initial kickoff. They didn't even get this deep in Leopard territory. Again, the Wildcat still being shown. Mr. Taylor handling the position. High snap. Taylor trying to escape, and the turf monster grabs him at the 46-yard line as Coach Kelly and the Spartans trying to do something to spark this team. They pulled Nizat out of the game and gone to this Wildcat formation to get some momentum. High snap right there, and you can see Taylor spinning his wheels and goes down and takes a loss. And it'll take Sarah Land to second down and long. That's Leighton Hudson, the center, with the high snap. And that's sometimes what you have. You have to look at Daniel Taylor. He's listed at 5'11", but I don't think he's 5'11". He may be 5'8". I think that's a little generous there, and, and Corey. And that's very generous in that situation. <laughs> Nizak bad at the controls for the Spartans. I thought there may have been a flag for some motion, but it did not come out, so pass is complete as Nizak comes back in and tosses one out to Jerome York. Demarcus Thomas on the reception for the Spartans. 6'2", 200 pound junior with his fourth reception of the season. Has one touchdown, but again, that's positive yardage for the Spartans. Gonna bring up now a third down and 12 yards to go. Big play right here for Sarah Lynn at the 5.03 mark in the third quarter, trying to keep the drive going. And Nizat tosses it to Jay Williams, and Williams is into the end zone. That is a 38-yard touchdown pass to Jay Williams, Sarah Land on the board. And look what happens when you get Britt Nizat a clean pocket, folks. He's a wonderful pocket passer, drops back, kind of pumps, hesitates, throws the ball over the shoulder of the defender, Jay Williams. The five foot 11 listed speedster, the Southern Miss commit, picks up his eighth receiving touchdown of the season, averages 41 yards per game, got about 20 yards, and that's the boost in the shot in the arm that the Spartans really needed. Robich on for the PAT, low snap. Wow. They cannot get it off, nor can that ball be advanced. Let's keep that one in mind, 14 to six. Blunt on top. We'll take a break and come back with more action. It's heating up here for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Welcome back to Harris Terry Stadium for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Brent Nizak, 38-yard touchdown pass to Jay Williams, but the PAT no good by Cole Robish. That is Williams' eighth touchdown of the season, but it Spoils the shutout for the Leopards. And the score is 14-6. Jordan Harris going to take this. 
for Blunt. Receives it and takes it up to about the 34-yard line of they'll mark it. Coach Kelly talked about it at coming out of the half, adversity. The Spartans had never been in this situation this season. Right. How they respond? Well, they came out and responded putting six points on the board, but the Spartan special teams, that was critical. That was a, a huge miss because now at some point in the game, you're going to have to go for two to tie the score up. But what a huge stop it would be for the Spartans right here to make Blunt go three and out. Don't move. we got the game of the week. Brain Buster coming up, headed your way. We're going to put that question out there, let you see if you can come up with the answer tonight. So it'll be coming up shortly, the game of the week. Brain Buster right now. Williams busting up the middle behind that big offensive line for about six or seven yard gain, taking Blunt to second down. They're going to give him eight on the play, wow. and that's just a nice, tough run. We've seen Jarris Williams do that all night long. The Spartans made the adjustment in the opening drive here of the third quarter of plugging up that middle, making sure out of their defense that they run the 3-4 defense. It's just a hat on a hat by this Leopard offense because they're getting to the second level, which is the linebacker level of this Spartan defense. Fumble on the snap. And the Spartans are jumping up and down as if they have it. The beanbag comes out, and that is a turnover. Looks like a bobble snap between the center and the quarterback, and Sarah Lynn right on it, ball at the 46-yard line. Charles Sullivan, the inside linebacker, 5'11", 195-pound senior, comes away with the leopard football, jumping up and down. Look at the center. LaClarence Trenier, the 260-pound junior, and the quarterback, LaMarcus Brown, just really couldn't get connected on that situation. And now the Spartans, again, take over in outstanding field position. Knees that lined up under center in the pro-style formation there. Little pitch out, and we have a flag on the play. Ball, encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. That'll take Sierra Land to first and five. Corey Darrington was the running back on that play. He's the 5'10", 185-pound sophomore. So a free five yards are giving now. It'll be interesting to see here if the football can be secured by Darrington, if it is a run play, because we haven't, he's a fresh back, but we haven't seen him a lot tonight. He's the third running back in the game for the Spartans. They pitch it out to him. He's trying to make a cut, and he cannot as he is brought down by the Leopards behind the line of scrimmage. Sidney Collins on that tackle. Great job by the Blunt Leopards. Diet nosing that pitch play. And it's a situation to where now the run, run, run is setting up the pass. Knees at on that last drive. Had a lot of success throwing the football. I wouldn't be surprised now if you look to your speedster again, Jay Williams or Daniel Taylor on the outside throwing the football to him. Second and about seven. Little trickeration as Darrington comes in. He throws it, and that ball is intercepted one-handed. Oh, my goodness, Corey. What a big play. And I believe that's by our guy, Andre Harris. Dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun. That's right. That's a Sports Center top 10 catch, wow. folks, because it doesn't get any better than that. We call that Odell Beckham style. One-handed interception. He catches that and brings that all the way to the ground. That's one that really needs to be uh, submitted to Sports Center. You look at the halfback pass, a little trickeration as Corey Darrington, the quarterback, oh also. Goodness. The interception, though, is outstanding because he grabs it with one hand and he knows it. And that's going to put the Leopards deep in their own territory, though. So it's the equivalent of a punt. It just gives the Leopards a little bit more momentum. And you're talking about the momentum swinging. Wow. Sarah Land was trying to capitalize off that fumble and take it to the end zone. But big interception by the Leopards as Browns take that one for a couple yards at the 301 mark here in the third quarter. Told you it was heating up, Corey. Man. Well, you know, unfortunately, if you're, if you're a Leopard fan, you're happy that the young man makes an outstanding interception. But it's deep in your own territory. You fumbled the last possession away. You don't pick up any positive yards really on first down. So if the Spartans can hold here, they're going to wind up with even better field position than they had when they threw the interception. Second down and about nine here. 
for the Lepers, trying to take advantage of that pick they just had. Handing that ball up, up the middle, and right now the middle is not open as it once was, as William Williams is tackled right there at the line of scrimmage. Jonathan Chaney from his defensive end position, 6'2", 225 pound junior, makes his presence known again tonight in this contest. Now it's gonna bring up a third down and long to go. That's gonna be a long seven yards to go for the Leopards. Let's see what offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson dials up right here for the Leopards. So they give Williams credit for forward progress there as Eric Williams comes into motion at the bottom of the screen. Dual receivers at the bottom. Play clock under 10 seconds. Brown's looking to connect, has a man across the middle, and he does get it out there, and it is complete. Gets that ball to Melvin Williams. But I believe we have a flag on the play on the far side near the Sarah Land sideline. It's going to go against the Leopards. Billy Pine saying, False start there, possibly, or illegal, illegal formation. motion, legal formation again. Illegal formation on the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Second time we've had that call against Blunt, and the coaching staff irate, as you can see, offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson cannot believe it, and Coach Lev Holly in disbelief as well. Backup quarterback Melvin Williams, the 5'9", 150-pound sophomore, does a good job of sitting down in the open spot in the Sarah Land defense, and it's a great throw by LaMarcus Brown hitting him. It would have picked up a first down and been enough, but now the play's negated, going to bring up third down and 12 yards to go for the Leopards. You're going to hand this one off to Williams, see if he can try to get some of that yardage back. Gets it up to about the 16, 17-yard line and it'll take Blunt to fourth down, and they are not happy at all with that penalty. Charles Sullivan on the stop for the Spartans, but as I mentioned, sometimes that's the kind of momentum play that you need if you're the Spartans. Now punting LaVirgil Smith. It has to be a clean snap right here because you definitely don't want to give up the safety, but the Spartans are going to get outstanding field position as Jay Williams waits to field this punt. Smith set up at the five-yard line, clean snap. Clean punt, he gets a nice punt off, pushes Williams back, and he bobbles it. Can Blunt capitalize? And I believe they do. Williams bobbles the punt return, and Blunt's going to get it first and 10 on the Sarah Land 45. And I think Uncle Mo just took an Uber up here to 8 Mile Court. Justice Trainer gets the fumble recovery off of the punt by the Spartans that was fumbled away, and that's just a huge play. It's the equivalent of a long, long run or a pass play that goes for a lot of yardage. You look at this situation to where, I'm not sure if that was number 10 for the Leopards who goes down Cameron Melvin Johnson, Williams. I believe Cameron Johnson, number 18, I believe. It is number 18. Um, and, and that's just an unfortunate situation because the medical training staff was out there immediately. They and sure now were. the Spartans take a knee as well as the Leopards, hoping that this young man is okay. Coach Lev Holly out there as well. And hopefully he will be okay. Okay, parents, it's time to get connected with Parent Connect. Join Carmen Bounds and Paula Reese as they look into district-wide policies that concern your child's and their school. You can catch them weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network. And Johnson looked like he's up, but being assisted off of the field, of course, so not a good look for the young man, but glad that he's able to head off the field there with some assistance. Yeah, not really putting any weight not on that weight knee on or right. leg. And same thing that we saw a, a week ago with Tyler Underwood. Um, we saw him not put any weight on it, and he wound up having a fractured fibula right. and had to have surgery. We saw him trying to jog it off on the sidelines a week ago for Theodore and just wasn't able to do so. But a big play, a big momentum changer for Blunt because it does flip the field. Now the Spartans are asked to try to bow up on defense once again. Defense has been their calling card all season long, only giving up 5.8 points per game. Now we're really going to have to see if the defense can rise to the occasion. Less than 20 seconds remain here in the third quarter. Al Whedon, Corley Bounty, and Kimberly Dunn on the call here as Blunt in control. 
Jairus Williams picking up a couple yards, maybe one or two on the carry, and that will be our last play of the third quarter as we head toward the fourth quarter and Blunt on top, 14 to six over Sierra Land. So after no scoring in the second quarter, Corey, had a very exciting third quarter as Sierra Land gets a touchdown, but they do miss the PAT. So while we got a break between the quarter, let's go ahead and put out the game of the week brain buster question. We'll throw it out there. UMS Wright leads all Mobile County schools with the most championship game appearances at eight. Name the school with the next highest total. That's our game of the week brain buster. Think about that one. And we'll come back to you in the fourth quarter and give you the answer as the blunt band is getting riled up, Corey. And on that fumble recovery right there off that, that punt return, the entire press box was rocking, Corey, under our feet with the blunt faithful getting excited. Yeah, they were quite excited to catch that type of break because you look at the sure-handed punt returner for the Spartans fumbling that ball away, trying to make a big play for his team and not the appropriate time to, to not be leading and to also have a fumble. You can make a big play with Greer's Apples for the students. Greer's Market is once again teaming up with Mobile County Public Schools for the 10th annual Apples for the Students program. Now, unlike traditional fundraisers, Apples for the Students is easy and fun. Best of all, everyone in the community can take part. It's simple. You shop, save your receipts, and turn them in at school, and the school can earn valuable items like computers and school supplies. So, shop Greer's Market for the Apples for the Students program. And don't forget Magnet School Applications they are coming due November 5th. The application process will begin online. You can go to mcpss.com or call the number right there on the screen for your Magnet School application. 12 minutes remaining in the contest here, Corey. We're entering the fourth quarter. What are you telling your team if you're Jeff Kelly right now? You have to have a stop. I mean, it's one play at a time. Coach Kelly talked to Kimberly on the sidelines to start the third quarter that it's going to be one play at a time. We can't get it all back. So right here is going to be critical in order to start bridging the gap. The 3-4 defense for Sierra Land lined up and ready. We haven't called Cole Dewitt's name too often tonight, maybe once or twice. But Blunt trying to air it out, incomplete. The entire Blunt sideline wants pass interference, but they are not getting it. Coach Holly has his hands on his knees. Wow. And is just turning around laughing. As you look at the instant replay right here, great job of LaMarcus Brown uncorking the pigskin. And you did have some pass interference by the defender right there for, for again, for Sarah Land. That's just tough. Billy King almost tackled the wide receiver prior to him trying to catch the football, but the back judge did not throw the flag. Third down for the Leopards as they come out to go for the jugular. Let's take it on the sidelines. Right, Kent, right now, Kimberly Dunn has an update on that injury for the Blunt Leopard. Yes, I was able to actually speak to the player himself, number 18. I asked him what happened. He said he tried to jump over a play that was going on and basically got chopped in half, and that tackle was right on his knee. So he was able to kind of walk it off, and he said you will see him on the field later in the game tonight. Thank you, Kimberly. We're looking at him right now walking on the track as he's trying to walk that one off. Cameron Johnson, but walking off a big first down and a run. There's your man, Jarris Williams, Corey. He took that one to get the first down to keep the momentum going for the Leopard. Yeah, that's a huge run by Jarris Williams, getting the ball all the way down to the Spartan 24-yard line. He was able to break containment of this 3-4 defense. And again, anytime you're able to break containment and turn the corner, great things are going to happen. First and 10 for the Leopards as they hand it off to Williams. He's been pretty much toting the load tonight for them. Picks up a couple on a scrappy run right there and will take them to second down as they're nearing the red zone. One thing you have to love about Jairus Williams, he's seeking contact. You look at the replay of that one, he would lowered his head, was looking for a defender to bowl over, bounced off of the first defender, was about to hit his <laughs> second option in the second hole, and then just was able to be tackled by a couple of Spartans defenders. But the initial contact you have to love. Ball on the 21-yard line of Sarah Land, second down. They go back to Williams again. He's eluding defenders as he gets the first down, and he's into the red zone, down to about 
the 13-yard line. Into the second level of defenders for the Spartans, the free safety Trenton Williams has to come up and try to make the stop. You look at the ferociousness he's running with, just shredding off defenders, lowering his head, trying to finish the run, and Trenton Williams was able to tackle him from up high. But again, it moves the sticks for the Blunt Leopards. It's going to be a first and 10 situation from close to the 13-yard line of the Spartans. Yeah, Williams came up a little gimpy after that tackle. And as you can see right there, the young man for Blunt, Cameron Johnson, kind of walking it off. So maybe we'll see him later on in the ball game. First and 10, as you mentioned, Corey, ball on about the eight yard line. They're gonna keep that hot hand going, the hot legs of Jarris Williams, as he bulls his way to about the six yard line for the Blunt Leopards. Jonathan Chaney, the 6'2", 225-pound junior on the stop, but not before Jairus Williams is, again, able to create yards after contact, just continuing to spin and make these Spartan defenders who now have their hands on their hips look a little bit tired. What a flip of the field. After the oh, turnover, yeah. now Blunt has marched down the field and is trying to capitalize and make points off turnovers. So we'll say it's at the seven-yard line, second and about four here for the Leopards in the pistol formation. They give it to Williams. He's weaving his way, trying to get up to the five-yard line, and the Spartans' defense somewhat holding and pushing him back. You don't want to have any unsportsmanlike conduct penalties right here on the goal line for either team and again both teams having a lot of extracurricular pushing yeah and that you just John want to make sure you don't do on. that do anything to hurt your team especially if you're the Spartans you don't want to get half the distance of the goal line going to bring up a third down and close to a long three yards to go for the Leopards and the Spartans have to hold the Leopards to a field goal attempt right here because if they score a touchdown, the Spartans are going to have to answer with a quick one of their own. So we'll give Williams credit with one yard on that one. They line up in that jumbo package again to the left of LaMarcus Brown. I'm, yeah, LaMarcus Brown. And he's going to keep it on the RPO core. But I believe he is not going to have enough for the first down. He's pushed out of bounds right about the five-yard line. They needed to get to look like the, about the three for a first down. Yes, just wasn't able to make it over the left end. And Jairus Williams tries to throw a chip block but wasn't able to do so. Now it's going to bring up fourth down and two yards to go. Blunt's really 20 seconds left on the play clock. Let's see if they have to call a timeout to really think about and gather themselves. 15 seconds, plenty of time to run this play and get it all for the Leopards. So Coach Lev Holly called a timeout early in the third quarter. They have two timeouts left. Play clock approaching five seconds. Blunt needing about a yard to get this first down to keep the drive going. They give it to Williams. Oh, Corey, he's hit pretty much right there at the line of scrimmage. Up ended in Sarah Land saying we got it, but there's a flag on the play as you can see. Cortland Martlin goes to make the block and is injured on the play. Comes up a little bit gimpy, maybe holding and favoring that shoulder as Williams looks to bounce to the outside. Holding. Decline. First down. So holding against the Leopard, so that fourth down play does not turn into a first down. So ball over on downs to Sarah Land at the 754 mark. Sarah Land down eight points. All right, let's go ahead and reveal it. We put the question out there earlier, the game of the week, Brain Buster. UMS Wright leads all Mobile County schools with the most championship game appearances at eight. Name the school with the next highest total. And, Corey, before you can answer, the, the answer is right in front of you. It's Got Blunt. These leopards. They have seven championship game appearances, and they own five state titles. Well, it's going to be critical now that the Spartans came away with that goal line stand on fourth down and two yards to go. Now the Spartans are trying to etch their way out of the shadows of their own goal post, taking over now at the five-yard line, their own five-yard line. Nizat right here is going to have to make sure if it's a pass, it's a quick swing pass to give himself a, a timing situation where they get out of the end zone. They need to go 97 yards to get into the end zone, and Rayshon McAlpine is headed that way. Can he get past one last defender? He cannot as he's brought down at about the 44-yard line, but a big run by McAlpine. 
And McAlpine's longest run of the night takes him off of his own five yard line. They go with the safe handoff and the push is finally made by the left side of that line by the offense. That's gonna be David Dreardon, Colton Beasley, and center Latin Hudson getting nice push, allowing him to bounce to the outside and getting his longest run of the night. So ball sitting at the 45 yard line of Sierra Land trying to get some more points here to get this ball game tied up. Down eight points right now, 14 to six, as we are going under seven minutes left in the ball game. And one of the things I'm noticing out of this 3-4 defense that Blunt is running, Cortland Martin kind of hurt his shoulder on the goal line in the blocking situation, and because of it, he's coming off of the field. He's absolutely gassed, and he's trying to get his shoulder right as well. You can see right there, that's going to be a false start against Sarah Land. Offense, penalty, remain second down. So they'll push the Spartans back five yards. Next week, we're going to wrap up the season. It'll be our last contest of the season as we're going to take it back to Ladd Stadium. Viger and Williamson doing battle live at 655. That should be a nice contest right there, Corey. And Williamson coming off the big win over Escambia County. Right. Viger. About to go unblemished, trying to go undefeated up at Oka, Opelika, trailing against the Bulldogs of Opelika. Let's see if the Spartans don't want to trail anymore. Trying to get that ball out to Daniel Taylor. Incomplete. Needs that. It appears if his first progression was to hit the screen to Williams, but that was tied up, so he decides to go to the deep route, but he can't get it to Taylor. So it takes Sarah Land to third down. Does a great job of the pump fake. You look at the six foot five quarterback standing tall, pump fakes at once. Nice ball thrown and just a little bit too far for Daniel Taylor. Jordan Harris pleading for the flag, saying it should have been some offensive pass interference, but it was not. Knees at rolling out. He's got a man incomplete. So that's going to take Sarah Land to fourth down. And that's Cortland Martin, folks, putting pressure all over Brett Nizad. I just all mentioned over. that Cortland Martin was a little bit winded and gassed, hurt his shoulder in that goal line situation, but he refuses to come out. As you can see, he's leaning to his left a little bit, favoring that shoulder. 550 remaining here in the fourth quarter, going to bring up a punting situation for the Spartans. The Leopards want to try to milk as much clock time off of the clock as possible when they get the football back. Robish trying to flip the field here for the Spartans. Coach Lev Holly is going to call timeout. It's his second timeout, and I think that's a smart one. Give Martin a little breather because you could see Martin laboring, Corey, going back onto the field. Coach is like, come on, let's tough it out here. But the young man is a bit drained. We're going to take a look at some region standings right now. We showed you the polls earlier. Theodore right there, pretty much region championship, region champions with that win last night. So up for grabs, you still got that fourth play spot. Davidson pretty much locked in. It may take a major miracle for Baker to try to jump up. Right now they're playing McGill, and I believe they were down when I last checked. So right now Theodore, the only team that has solidified and locked their playoff position up in 7A Region 1. 7A still has some games to play next week as well, Corey. Right now, here's the tough one. You got Sarah Land undefeated, Spanish Ford undefeated. They're scheduled to meet next week. Big game right here for Blunt tonight, but also over at St. Paul's. St. Paul's and Daphne are playing. In essence, you have three teams trying to get two slots in 6A. 17-14, to 14, the Trojans lead over the Saints. Great game going on there, just like Opelika leading Viger 16 to 14 in the fourth quarter. All right, so big, big contest tonight here for Blunt and Sierra Land, and also on the west side of town with St. Paul's and Daphne. So Robish with the win to his back, he puts this one way back deep. Harris calls for. The fair catch at about the 10-yard line. Let's take a look at 5A Region 1. This one a little tough as well. Viger pretty much has won the region as the champ at 6-0. Right now, Jackson and the floor playing up at Legion Field. 
And we pretty much know LaFleur would kind of have to win out to possibly get in between them and Faith Academy. Citronelle pretty much going to have them a slot in the playoffs this year as well, Corey. So good look for Jason Barnett, who stepped in the last minute at the top of the season to take over for the Wildcats there. And the last look right here at 4A. Now this one gets really, really convoluted. UMS Wright is in, but you have three teams right there with four region wins, Hillcrest, Williamson, and Scambia County. You just mentioned Williamson wrapped their season up last night in region play by beating Escambia County 7-2. So that one possibly could have a four or five way tie. So we shall see after tonight because it will be the last region games for four A teams. Williams with the carry picks up maybe one or two there as Blunt has the ball and they have the clock on their side. If they can milk the clock, Corey, they can get out of here, sneak out with a win at 14-6 if they can continue to maintain ball control. In the history of the Spartan program, they've never been region champions. Never. Even though they've made a state championship game appearance under Jeff Kelly. So it would be huge if they're able to win this region. But Blunt's trying to put a one, which would be a loss, in the column for the Spartans. Williams running that one up past the 15-yard line. Coach Kelly talked about it at the beginning of the season at Media Days. One thing they had on the wall, they want to be the region champ. They've never done it. And even asked him before the game, uh, they're continuing to hit that goal. He said, we're trying to get it. And I think they're going to put a couple Time of more out seconds. Right now. A couple of more seconds are going to go onto that clock, probably 450, maybe 449 on the clock because the timeout was called and the coaching staff immediately pointed to the clock and Billy Pine yeah, is yeah. making sure he tells the electronic clock operator how much time to put back on the clock. So Sarah Land does call the timeout right there. Speaking of the Spartans, we're trying to get their schedule up, remaining schedule. We know next week they play Spanish Fort. That's their last ball game. They had a bye last week and they pretty much owned everyone this season undefeated with four shutouts, as you can see right there in front of you, over Rain, Robertsdale, LaFleur, and at St. Paul's. That was a big one, 35 to nothing. So the big region one showdown for six A's next week with Sarah Lane and Spanish Four. And again, just some great week. Last week, 11 matchups are coming up. You look at UMS right they're shutting out WS Neal 29 to zero. Centronel all over Wilcox Central 36 to zero. There's a look at Blunt and their schedule. Remember, tonight they play Sarah Lynn. Next week they play Daphne, and that's going to be a huge one as well. But as Coach Holly told me before the ball game, we don't want to leave it up to anyone else. We want to control our own fate. So we need to handle business tonight before we go to next week. And so far they're doing it up 14-6, to six, under five minutes remaining in the contest. And there's the man been running the rock all night for him, Jarris Williams on that third down play, but that's not enough to get first down. So it looks like the punt team will come back on the field. Stoppage and play here. Yeah, that that after the timeout, 457 was added back to the clock when it was down to 446 prior to the timeout. And now Sarah Land is still asking after that timeout is called for additional time to be put back on the clock. And they may get a three more seconds put back on the clock also in this situation. We'll see what Billy Pine and his crew say. So Coach Jeff Kelly burns another timeout to stop it. So if I'm correct, he's used two timeouts and Lev Holly's used two timeouts. So each team should have one timeout remaining here in the ball game. Well, that's a critical timeout that Jeff Kelly used wisely because again, this is a game of chess, not checkers in this situation. Yeah. He knew that if he was going to put the punt the football away, his team had to come away with the stop. Now, we saw just moments ago a fumbled punt by the Sarah Land Spartans and Jay Williams. He's going to have to field this one, and, and just if he's able to plant those feet at all and get any type of wall or wave going, he's going to run to the numbers. That's what they teach those guys, and it'll be an interesting situation here to see if Sarah Land's going to put pressure or put up some type of wall to go ahead and create an alley for Williams. But Virgil Smith with the punt into that north wind, and it's blowing hard, blowing it down. And Blunt is going to down this ball at their own 49-yard line. Plenty of time for the Spartans, but again, with only one timeout remaining in the contest, now it's going to be up to the hands of Britt Nizak 
running the quarterback show. If he's going to throw the football and give him the green light to throw the football, he's going to have to make sure that he makes good decisions with it. The receivers are going to have to make sure they're running routes to where they can step out of bounds and save precious moments and right. seconds on the clock. And we haven't seen McAlpine bust longer than a 20 to 25 yard run tonight. As we know, he comes in averaging over 152 yards per game. Sierra Land starts the drive at the blunt 49-yard line at the 434 mark, handing the ball off to McAlpine as he turns near the Sierra Land sideline. He does get out of bounds, and that will stop the clock. That's almost about a nine, so that's a first down run right there. That's going to make the chain game move. So first down for Sierra Land, big Big run for McAlpine, picked up maybe 12, 13 yards there, Corey. Yeah, that's a big run, and he was able to get to the outside and step out of bounds, so that's something to where the Spartans, if they're going to go back to it, again, they just want to run to the out of bounds if they're able to get on it. McAlpine's picking his hole to run through, and again, that's his second longest run of the night to where he's going to pick up another first down where the clock will stop. Takes the ball to about the 25-yard line. Look at him putting both hands around the ball, make sure no one's punching it out. Don't want to have a costly turnover at this point in the ball game. And the discombobulated blunt defense cannot call timeout. They can, they have one left, but they don't want to use it in this situation. Great ex offensive execution so far by the Spartans on this drive. Leopards on the heels right now as McAlpine continues to run it. That's three runs in a row. A late flag comes in. Late flag, so we'll see what the call is going to be. The Spartans seem to think that it's against the Leopards, and in that situation, either hands to the face or a face mask because, yes, it has to be a face mask in that situation, and that's going to be a costly penalty. With 339, it's still going to stop the clock, but I, I think that the free yardage, there's also an injury on yeah, the play a, a by the down. Spartans. It's going to be one of the big offensive linemen up front for Sarah Land. Looks like Colton Beasley. Left tackle, Colton Beasley. Down right now. Next week, make sure you join us, Viger and Williamson at Ladd Stadium. We'll go live at 655 for week 11 action. Viger, the number one ranked team in 5A and Williamson. After wrapping up region play last night, got the fingers and toes crossed, hoping to get into the playoffs at 4A Region 1. So we'll do that ball game next Friday at Last Stadium, 6.55. We go live. And also thanks to our folks at Jersey Mike's all season long. They've been taking care of us, feeding the crew. Jersey Mike's a sub above since 1956. Man, thanks to them, Corey, all season Personal long. Personal foul, face mask. First Great job by Jersey Mike's for taking care of us all season long, like you mentioned. Thank you, Mark and Christina Sinclair. And also, Future One taking care of us with the apparel all season, hooking us up with the polo, the folks at Future One. Man, you got to know your future with Future One. Where the future, Gus Smith and Trent Massey, innovators, any athletic apparel or equipment, you call Future Ones and we'll take care of your needs. So after the penalty, they're trying to get the yardage correct. Referee Billy Pine, Billy Pine is mm -hmm. calling the ball for play. We're ready for play now. And this so is the deepest that the Spartans have been in Leopard territory without throwing that touchdown pass that Nizat did. So let's see what they come up with here. Trying to go back across. He has a man and cannot connect with him. Tried to get that ball out to Timothy Curvin. Incomplete, Corey. They tried a little trickeration, but a little deflection to the other side of the field. They could not connect. Good job of rolling the pocket to the right. The yep. throwback pass Looked to the back. tight end who released the six foot, 210 pound senior just out of his outstretched arms. Good play call by the Spartans. The deception was there. And again, if you're a blunt defender, you don't want to get caught looking in the backfield. You want to stay at home and be disciplined with your eyes. Right here, McAlpine gets a touch inside of the 10-yard line if you're the Spartans. 
Alpine running that ball. Still keeps the legs going. Does he get out of bounds? Clock is still running. So clock is still running. He does not get out. And that's huge because there's three minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. That's going to bring up again a third down. Third down. I don't think he got any yardage on that play, Corey. Third down and nine yards to go for the Spartans. They have to have some type of urgency right here. You can't walk up to the line of scrimmage. You only have one timeout remaining. So it's, it's definitely not two-minute drill time, but under three right here with four down territory, the Spartans are in. Jay Williams in motion. And Nizak trying to get that ball to Taylor. And he Taylor does. says he has it. That's a touchdown at the 225 mark. That's a good throw. Rolling out to the right, which is Nizak strength. Throwing it to the five foot seven Daniel Taylor at 155 pounds. He just sits down and Nizak throws it to the only place that anybody can catch it. And that's his wide receiver. A great job of going down. We look at the replay, the outstretched arms of Taylor. He's going to come away with it, and now having to go for two. Here's your play of the game, Al. This is it right here. Sarah Lynn knows that they need two points to tie the ball game. Jay Williams in the backfield along with Nizat. And there's going to be a flag, flag on, the play, on the play or a timeout call. Wow, timeout play. So Holly calls the timeout. You can see the trick oration Whoa, developing from huge. Williams to Daniel Taylor, and he was going to catch something. <laughs> Look at Coach Kelly like, man, I had it. And, and that's a situation wow. to where you're sick because you had your best two-point conversion play called. Yep. Now Blunt took a sneak peek at it, knowing what's about to come at them. In that situation, you look like you were going to have a halfback or a running back to throw the football out in the flat. Now that play is going to be done. So now you're like, okay, guys, we've worked on our two-point conversion execution. Right. We're going to have to go down into our bag of tricks again. And we saw this a week ago when the Davidson Warriors were able to upset the Theodore Bobcats when they were faced with a situation in overtime where they had to score it to had tie to. the game up. They were able to do so with their best play call. In this situation, there's no difference except there's plenty of time left at 225. Let's see what the Spartans are able to come away with. Jeff Kelly, let's see where he can get his Spartan <laughs> swag at right here. Harry White in the backfield with knees at Taylor in motion and Williams at the bottom of the screen. He wants to go to his main man, Jay Williams, for the two-point conversion, and it is good. And, Corey, we are tied up 14-14 with 2.25 remaining. Nizak hooks up with Jay Williams, the Southern Miss commit. Brett Nizak, very effective, rolling out to his right. Look at the squared shoulders, a perfect throw. Too much cushion giving Too much. by Mr. Harris. And because of the cushion giving, you have to respect Jay Williams' ability to catch the football. But in a goal line situation, you don't have to give him that much coverage. Great execution by the Spartans coming away out of the timeout. We're knotted up at 14 points apiece. As a matter of fact, that's 14 unanswered points that's now. That's right by the Spartans, and now, I tell you what, Al, we're in for a fantastic finish, and offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson is just licking his chops, trying to get ready to get Jairus Williams, LaMarcus Brown, and Eric Williams the football. Up to that point, all of the scoring had taken place in the first quarter and the third quarter, so that's our first points in the second or fourth quarter with the touchdown by Sarah Land and the two-point conversion. Coach Kelly said, look, let's go with the high percentage, put the ball in the hands of the best guy we can get it to, and just throw it to Williams. Now, here's the thing. With one timeout remaining the Spartans have, it's going to be critical for Blunt to get positive yards and not to step out of bounds or have any incomplete passes. Jordan Harris kind of bobbles the kickoff right there but picks it up, steps out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. 
Good so field Blunt position. out of timeouts. Great point you mentioned right there, Corey. And a late flag comes in. Late flag comes in after the kickoff return. Now let's see how this is going to sort out. Sierra Land does have one timeout remaining, and Blunt is out of timeout. That's hitting yardage right there on Blunt's sideline. So you, you had the Leopards fans who were very excited over there, along with the coaches, pointing out that there might have been some type of late hit or personal foul called against the Spartans from where it was thrown. It would bring the Leopards almost to midfield with 2.15 remaining. Billy Pine and his crew working it out right now. We're about to get the call. So it's going against Sarah Land, unsportsmanlike penalty there. So they're going to march this 15 yards off, and it'll get Blunt closer to the midfield strike. The Leopards band to our right is playing living my best life. <laughs> so right now we're going to see how offensive coordinator and the offense see if they are living their best life in this two-minute drill to be executed trying to get points on the board to take over. It is 14 to 14 with 216 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Trips at the top of the screen for the Leopards. One lone receiver at the bottom. A little delayed draw for Jarris Williams. He needs to get out of bounds. Blunt has no timeouts. He steps out about the 45-yard line, 2.07 remaining. So now we can really see a two-minute drill here for the Leopards. First and 10 ball going to be placed at the 45-yard line. Good stop by the Spartans. You look at this clock at 2.07 left to go in the fourth quarter. Blunt now takes over at the 45-yard line. How huge was that penalty, that unsportsmanlike? Just have to stay disciplined. Don't want to do anything to hurt your team. The Spartans are going to have to make sure they secure the tackle once they get Blunt in bounds. Little quick screen out to Jordan Harris. And he does the foot shuffle and goes nowhere. He has stopped for no gain, Corey. He should have stepped out of bounds. But mm. just like I mentioned, the Spartans did a wonderful job of making sure he didn't get out of bounds. The clock continues to run. A sense of urgency by the Leopards. The Spartans having one timeout remaining. They get a stop right here. You can bet your bottom dollar on second down. They'll call that timeout to give themselves an opportunity. I do want to let you know the ball game is 14-14. We see 14-12 on the screen, so I want to let you know that. Second down for the Leopards, the, the Marcus Brown airing it out, and the Blunt coaches upset. They felt Eric Williams' jersey was being held by the cornerback for Sarah Lynn, Cordell Flott. They said he had a handful of jersey, and they cannot believe it. I'm not sure if he had a handful of jersey, but the wow. bad part about that, if you're a blunt leopard, the clock stops. The Spartans stop. still have a timeout. Here's the instant replay coming right in your living room. It's a great thrown ball, and the referee on the side is in the way He's of our camera, <laughs> so we can't really see, but the clock is stopped with 124 remaining in the fourth quarter. We're tied at 14 to 14. Third down is money down. It's a money game situation for the Leopards. Dual receivers at the top. LaMarcus Brown decides to keep this one on his own. He needs to get out of bounds. He does not. Sarah Land has a timeout. No need to burn it right now because it's going to be fourth down. And I would call and the I timeout. And I do believe they are yes. going to go ahead and you, you do it. you got to. You have to they stop the They do stop clock. it at 110. You, you have to stop the clock in that situation because you want to give your offense an opportunity with a minute left to go or less in the game. Now you're forcing Blunt and fourth down territory to pump this football away and make the decision. They're going to have to punt it away, but we've seen the Spartans drive be able to come away with some big time throws. And we talked about the two minute offense. Well, here's a situation where you're going to get a chance to go super duper fast and run your one minute offense with one timeout remaining. It just went away. So you're going to run your one minute offense with no timeouts left on the clock. It's really going to boil down to execution for the Spartans. The Spartans come to the field, breaking the huddle on the sideline. Jay Williams 
handles the punt return duties for Sarah Land. So he's going to set up at his, about his 10-yard line. The Virgil Smith on to punt for the Leopards. You want a good, clean snap and a good, clean kick right here. Nice punt that he gets off. Almost a line drive directly to Williams as he fakes out one leopard, fakes out two. There's the flag coming in. You know what that's going to be, Corey. Three flags coming in. Block in the back without question. Again, if you can't see the numbers in front of you and you turn to the side and you make that block, that's going to be an easy call. What's going to happen is it's going to create a situation with 58.5 seconds remaining. The Spartans are going to have to go some 97 yards on the play. There's the block right there by Trenton Williams. And that'll push Sarah Lamb back. Block in the back on the return team. 10 yard penalty or half the distance to go, first down. So first and 10 ball being placed. Just like right at the eight yard right line. about the eight yard line. So Sarah Lamb needs to drive to at least the red zone area, Cole Robish. I'm sorry, not Cole Robish. Yeah, Cole Robish, longest field goal, about 40 yards, Coach Kelly told me. And he's only made two field goals this season. Little quick handoff right there. Good job. Carrie the, White. Yeah, the blunt defensive line does an outstanding job of making sure he doesn't get anything. Jordan Harris Mitchell on the stop. You look at Sarah Land, they're going to have to quickly go if they want to try to get two more plays off or try to get it away. They'll have an opportunity. If not, we'll be going to overtime. And that's a very familiar thing for us here for the second consecutive week. I think that's where we might be headed unless something miraculously happens here, Corey, because Sarah Land is taking his time. Nizat looks back at the play clock as it approached under 10 seconds. And he decides to hand this one off once again to White. And that's going to be the last play of the fourth quarter. Or as we like to say, the last play of regulation. Because, Core, back-to-back -back weeks, you just mentioned it, we're going to overtime. It is free football right now. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and give you some more football, the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Goes to overtime for the second week in a row. Don't move. It's getting hot up here in Eight Mile. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Al Weed, joined by Corley Bounty. Down on the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn and Corey. We have overtime for the second week in a row. Scoring took place in the first quarter. Scoring took place in the third quarter. And then Sarah Lane got that last score in a two-point conversion, and we are tied and taking it to free football time. Let's take a look at my checklist. For Blunt, they needed to match the Spartan swagger and intensity. They did an outstanding job of that in the first half, leading 14-0. to zero. They must put away the penalties, Blunt, that is. They weren't able to do that here in the second half, and they had some costly penalties, and Blunt needed to finish strong. We talked about a halftime. Right. There was 24 right. minutes of football left. Well, well, they're going to have an opportunity to finish strong, but it'll be in overtime. So let's see if the Blunt Leopards can finish strong and come away with this home field win. Adversely, the Sarah Land Spartans had to protect the quarterback. They were able to do that, and because of it, Nizat was able to come away with a couple of huge completions for the two-point conversion and the touchdown. They need to limit the Leopards at the line of scrimmage, stopping the run. They were able to do that in the second half. Jarris Williams had over 80 yards rushing in the first half. They did a good job of bottling them up. Spartan special teams, they have the block extra point with 448 remaining in the third quarter. We're able to convert on that huge two-point conversion. Right. Now we're in extra period. Overtime rules are very simple. Both teams get an opportunity to possess the football. So if Sarah Lynn comes away with the stop and Blunt doesn't score, adversely now Sarah Lynn would then get the football and have an opportunity to score. And any score would lead to a win by the Spartans if they're able to hold the Blunt Leopards without scoring here in this first possession. Now Sarah Lynn chose to defend this end of the field. 
the wind has been coming out of the north. Keep that in mind. So these teams won't be kicking into the wind right now as Blunt rolls out onto the field to try to get on the board first. The Blunt Leopards have been given the football, pounding it inside to their big playmaker, Jarris Williams, in between this huge, massive offensive line. Let's see. Fumble snap. Fumble snap. Brown escapes. That could have been costly, but a flag comes in. We may have some possible P.I. here, Corey. Let's see what the call is going to be. And I, I, it's going to be a holding called against the Spartans in the end zone. So in that situation, the Spartans on the roll, sometimes you're, you're benefiting. You look at this fumbled snap. The quarterback, LaMarcus Brown, wasn't able to handle it because of it. It sometimes gives you the separation. You can see the jersey being held on number seven. First down. That's clearly great camera work. Great camera work by a crew. Billy King the third had the defender grabbed by, or the offensive wide receiver by the jersey. A great pickup by our camera crew. So first down ball at the five yard line for the Leopards. Get the ball to number three right here, Al. I'm pretty sure it's going to get in the hands of Jarris Williams as it does. He's headed to the corner. Can he stretch out? Doesn't he is taken out of bounds at about the three, maybe the two or three. See where they place it at. You look at the handoff, just trying to bounce it to the outside. That penalty was huge, but you're able to get an outstanding tackle. Billy King the third is able Makes to up. redeem himself up for and get a time tackle not letting Jarius turn the corner and Mr. Williams was looking to score six and Jarius wasn't able to get in there. He was I trying go to right turn. back to him though because this huge offensive line you mentioned it you at got the beginning to. of the four, uh, telecast that how big this offensive line is see if they're able to get their push. Average is 284 pounds they give it back to Williams and boom he is brought down wrapped up immediately Right at the line by there. Chancellor by Handy, the big nose tackle, nose guard, 6'2", 285 pounds, is able to make the stop. Look at that. Boom, I think it may have been Trevon McAlpine for 97. It is, because he and immediately he, and comes he went off, off the field. He went off the field, yeah, right. McAlpine immediately comes off the field. And Good he, catch there, Al. And he's a freshman, Corey. Big fella right there, opposite. That was a huge play. It's third down right now. And, and again, I'm going to try to go to play action in this situation. I've given the ball to number three. We've seen this jumbo There's package. There's your jumbo package. High snap. Seems like Brown wasn't ready for it. He's going to keep it. Oh, my goodness. So after a five-yard holding penalty, first and, first and goal for the – First, first and goal for the Leopards. They give it to Williams. He runs outside. They try it again. He's brought down. And third down, another, another bobbled snap. And Brown can't seem to get it together. And you can see Cortland Martin out on the field just out of gas trying to keep it together. It is now fourth down, Corey. This Blunt's got to get it and not kicking a field goal. They are going for the touchdown here. Scott Crowley, timeout. And timeout. Lev Howell, yeah. you do get a timeout in overtime. They'll give you a timeout. So Coach Holly's going to burn the timeout and say, let's discuss this right now. Wow. Scott Crowley on the sidelines for the Sarah Land Spartans, knowing that he's urging his oh. defense on, knowing that they just have to come away with that one play. Jeff Kelly summed it up perfectly to Kimberly Dunn, saying all we need is one play at a time. Well, Coach, your one play is going to be right here as it's going to be fourth down and goal to go from the one-yard line in overtime. This is huge right here. This is huge. Court, the game has been so tight, we haven't even had a chance to talk about our pigskin player of the game. We could have two or three, maybe four nominees tonight if we wanted to. You're right, Al. Some just special performances wow. out here tonight on the football field. But if you were to ask me right now, the Blunt Leopards, Mr. Harris coming away with a pick six early in the game is definitely a nominee as well as the running back, Jarris Williams, for the Leopards. So Quentin Washington is going to come on to attempt a field goal. About a 28-yarder. And he is going to hook it in there. So Blunt extends the lead 17 to 14. That was 
let's see, from the three yard line, the ball was spotted. It spotted about the 20 eight yard, yard line. 20, it was a 20 yard field goal attempt that's going to go and be good. That's huge for the Leopards because they put points on the board now leading 17 to 14 in overtime. Now the Spartans are going to get the football. And you have many, many options if you're Jeff Kelly as far as offensively. You had success with Brett Nizak rolling out to his right, finding wide receivers. Everything's been positive with Brett Nizak rolling out to his right. The one right. time he rolled out to his right, tried to have the tight end release to his left, was wide open. But inside this red zone area now, you can't turn the ball over or the game's over. Cannot. And a touchdown right here does it. That's it. McAlpine, let's see if this offensive line can come through for the Spartans because a 10-yard burst would match his number on his jersey. McAlpine running behind that big line, picks up a yard or two as the blunt team on the sideline encouraging the fans to get up on their feet. And the band is yanning, chanting defense. Second down for the Spartans. Jeff Kelly again, the mastermind calling the plays offensively for the Spartans. And I think McAlpine is another added weapon because he can catch the ball out of the backfield also. Jay Williams in motion for the Spartans. They throw it out to him. That's a fumble. That's a that's lateral. A that's a live ball. Game over. The game is over. To me, that's a fumble. Okay, all right. The ball is recovered it's by recovered the Spartans, and, and that's huge. At about the 16-yard line, Williams the, could not haul it in, Corey. The but game's if, over. Hit Blunt picks that Blunt up. If Blunt jumps on it, that's the ball game because that is a lateral. And, and, and you can and, see the coaches yeah. right there get, get the ball, get the ball. Third and goal here for the Spartans. Ball at the 16-yard line. They go to Jay Wood. Here's the play we didn't get to see. Look at knees at headed toward the end zone. Corey, that's a touchdown. That's the ball game. That's the play they tried to do for the two-point conversion. Why not? And the timeout call by Lev Holly. And Sarah Lynn shocks Blunt with a touchdown in overtime to <laughs> get the win 20-17. to 17. Corey, I want to say I can't believe it, but I do believe it. That was the exact same play Jeff Kelly tried to call to get the two-point conversion. Well, here's the great thing about wow. that play. You can't run that play from the three-yard line. You don't have enough room. You don't have enough you space. You don't have enough room to run. So because now you have extra space after the lateral, you give yourself an opportunity to call that. But the bigger thing is let's take a look at the replay. Let's take a look at the throw by the non-quarterback. Daniel Taylor. And that is huge. Daniel Taylor is only five foot seven, and because he throws that ball on the money, you look at the way that Britt Nizat was lumbering down the field and wow. able to come away with that touchdown catch. What a spectacular play call by Jeff Kelly. And I just mentioned, he's a mastermind when it comes oh, yeah. down to calling. Here's look the at replay, the instant Corey. replay. On the money. And Nizat just takes it away mm. from the blunt defender. And that's huge because he takes it away from Jabriant Bradley and, and shows that he has the football in control of it. And here it is, the Spartans find a way to take one away from the Blunt Leopards, but what a great game for the second week in a row on the Mobile County Public back School System. Television Network, outstanding job by the camera crew picking up every single bit, every single replay that we had tonight right. was right on the money and showing that Nizat was able to come away with the game-changing play. Again, you look, who's the player of the game right there? It has to be Brett Nizat. Uh, Unbelievable. Throws a Unbelievable. touchdown uh, and, and comes away right there with a huge play, and he sells it, does a good job. That's why you have to make sure you finish and do your job. Don't get caught watching That's right. the That's ball right. carrier, and that just took a split second for Nizat to slip away. As soon as he slipped away, the exact same play call with more space on the field, and sometimes it just works in your favor. And the Spartans found a way to match intensity found a way to win this game like Jeff Kelly said he was going to do. Congratulations and another outstanding play football game. All right, the Spartans unite and come back and get the win in overtime, 20 to 17 over Blunt. Next week, we're going to Lab People Stadium. It's our last telecast of the season. Viger and Williamson will do battle. We'll go live at 6.55. For Kimberly Dunn down on the sidelines, Corey LeBounty, 
executive producer Quentin Howard and the entire crew. I'm Al Whedon thanking you for joining us. What a ball game we had tonight. Sarah Lane gets the win for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Have a great night.